One thing I desire, only this I see, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture, laying at your feet. Oh, just to dwell, dwell.
Good morning, good morning. This is indeed the day the Lord has made, and we are already rejoicing and glad. And at least I'm rejoicing. I believe there's others besides me who are rejoicing and glad in this uh, wonderful, beautiful day that the Lord has graced us to be able to experience, not just see it, but to experience it. And good morning to you. Good morning to you. And good morning to each one of you. Happy Sunday morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Happy Sunday morning. How are you? I am great. I'm great. I got caught up in the song and worshiping God in song. So I was like, oh, it's time to. Yeah, oh, we live <laughs> and engaging. And she was still engaging with the Lord. That's fine. Yes, yes. That's fine. What's going on? Everything is always going on. This life is exciting being on mission with God. And so, and uh, with with you all, my friends, we're on friends on mission. Yes. And so, um, this song, I was listening to this song, and I love this song. Y'all don't like it by now. Every one of the songs that, you know, that we um, sing, you know, is um, my favorite. Okay. <laughs> so, so yesterday, um, I was um, I was sitting at the computer doing something. I'm like, I, you know, let me um just listen to some worship songs and, you know, just allow that to get in my spirit because I often share that um, I've never heard God's audible voice, but he speaks to us in various ways. Yes, he does. And for me, it's one of the ways it's sung. So I was listening, so I'm singing, and this is one of the songs I just got caught up in yesterday, and then I went to, um, I just went from one song to the next, you know, and just um, letting God speak to me, you know through song and worship and have through song. And so then I went to um 
Jireh by um, Maverick City. Okay. And, um, you know, Jireh means God will provide because he's God. The son talks about him being more than enough. You know, All he right. owns everything. So he really is more than enough. But I love, mm-hmm. like, really to give attention and pay attention to the lyrics and songs. That's why they are important. And you often laugh. And I'll hear, we'll be, um, we'll be in the car or something. We hear a song or we'll be talking about songs. And I share with my husband how I was just be singing songs. And didn't didn't really think about what the lyrics really mean, you know. Yeah. If if I was singing it correct, you know, if they, if I had the correct lyrics, because I mean, yeah, there are yeah, times she didn't, but yeah, okay. And I I just knew it was correct, you guys. But anyways, <laughs> they weren't. But sometimes, you know, I was singing the correct lyrics and didn't pay attention to what I was really saying. Yeah. Now that yeah. I'm old, I'm like, oh. Oh, no wonder my grandparents is like, what are you singing? I'm singing Mm -hmm. that, you know? Yeah. And so it's the same thing. Like, we have to be careful about what we're singing and what we're allowing into our spirit. But if we really believe that he's Jaira, I've looked at at these lyrics um, several times in this song. And and the song, the first line of that song, Jaira, it starts out saying, I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Mm. talking about God like this song just starts off and I mean if they didn't say anything but this one line here through the whole song it would honestly be enough I'm never loved I've never been more loved than I am right now and they go on saying you know you are gyra you are you are enough gyra you are enough and I will be content in every circumstance you are gyra you are enough and I'm like if we could really grasp that ever really grasp that and always remember that he really is enough and Mm. I could be content in that. Yes. 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 And we know, um, Paul talks about being content. Yes, he does. In every situation. So like we really grasp that. And if I really grasp that, that's why I do listen to him over and over again to remind me, you know, and to read God's word over and over to remind me. And then, you know, you go down farther it says that talking about God, he's forever enough, always enough, always more than enough. He is, he is forever enough, always enough, you know, more than enough. It goes back to talking about I'm already loved. And it says I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know what you've spoken. I'm already loved more than I could imagine. And that is enough. And mm. talks about he, if he closed, um, Oh, good gosh, let me get down to here. Um, he, it says, if he dresses the lilies with the beauty and splendor, how much more would he clothe you? Yeah, yeah. How much yeah. more would he clothe you? If he watched over every sparrow, how much more does he love you? He if he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor, how much more would he clothe you? I'm like, we really believe that. And we really believe that he's more than enough. Mm -hmm. I'm already loved. I don't need, I don't need anybody to determine my value because he's already determined it. So I don't have to impress anyone. You don't have to impress anyone. God has given you a value. And if you believe that he does all that, he's more than enough. He owns everything. Then we look to him. We focus on his mission and allow him to take care of all the other things, whether it's our finances, you know, whether it's our education. Yes, we need a job. Yes, we need the work. We talked about working while we wait for God. You know, yeah, we were talking about being missional, but also you do have to work. You know, yeah, and yeah. so all those things, like if we really grasp this, and this is why I tell myself, if I really grasp this and I understand this and I operate in it, and I'm on mission with him, and that's priority, all the other things because he's more than enough, and because everything he owns, he's got that taken care of. I just need to listen to him, do what he says, and make his mission priority over everything because he's more than enough. That's good, it's a good word. Yeah, that's it, that's all. Is it that song? Yeah, and that should be more than enough. <laughs> but you know, you go on and share what God has given you. All right, thank you. I, <laughs> I I was ready to just I was about to say you better redeem your time. So okay. All right, you know, you know, I I, I wanna um just just something that was uh pressing on me thinking about how, how the Lord speaks to me. And um and and, and that is, you know, our, our focus this year is listen to Jesus and do what he says. But that means maturity. That That's really the buzzword this year. That's mm-hmm. really the foundation of it. You're going to listen and do, you, you got to mature. Yeah. 
Yes. You you got to, what to do. You can listen to mature. You, you got to mature. And, and one of the things I was think, thinking about um, the last couple of days, and I said, I'll share it now. And I woke up thinking about it and I was got here thinking about it. And that's the fact that maturity is everyone's responsibility. Mm. It, it's just not up to the other person to become mature. That's true. And then we remain immature in Christ. And, and just because we have Christian experience doesn't mean we're mature. That's true. My daddy used to say a thing. People say they say 20 years. He said, unfortunately, some people have one year lived over 20 times. Mm. They still just as immature as they were the first time, the first year. They don't know anything more about him. Um, but, he, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't want to, you know, go a little further with that, that we, we, we then do not just identify what's lacking or needs to be matured. We're talking about maturity. We have a responsibility. We also have an obligation to hold one another accountable in maturity. Yes, we, we have to help absolutely. hold each other accountable in maturity. Maturity doesn't happen because we sit back and 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 and, and say, "Well, I got mine," or 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 you know, they 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 need to grow, or they need to change, or they need to be better. No, we 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 have to we have to uh, look and see what we can do to help hold each other accountable. Now, this is not the same as looking and identifying what others are not doing but offering to help others be what the Lord would have us to be. Because too many times we think uh, in, in, in obli mutual obligation accountability that we just got to point out what somebody else is not doing. Mm, that, that, that ain't it. Just to point out, well, they ain't doing this. They ain't doing that. They ain't doing the other. That, that's not helping help each other accountable for maturity. No, no. It's, it's in addition to identifying what needs to be done, it's doing something about it. Absolutely. See, the mature person does something about it. I, I can have, I can have, haven't had uh, children and, and, a, and a grandson, watch this, and, 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 and a stove and, 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 and be hot all day long, I can say the stove is hot, the stove is hot, but then another, or, or don't, don't play around the uh, uh, electrical outlets and all that. But now what am I doing to help them not do that? That's right. Am I, am I going to turn the oven on and open the oven door and walk away talking about to say the stove hot? No, I'm, I'm going to close the oven door. Now, I can't stop them if they touch the side of it. I hope they don't. Then they're going to see how hot it is. I don't, but I don't want, but I'm going to buy those plugs to, yes. to put on two, the electrical outlets, so cover that is, so they don't be able to play with it. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all mm -hmm. get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Do we, we have to help people mature. We don't just point out what they're not doing. That ain't maturity. That's actually immature on our, on our part. Maturity means, watch this. Let me take a step further because this is the thing that was really on me. Maturity means you all not allowing the lowest common denominator to become our standard. Oh, wow. Because too many times we point to what others aren't doing. And as much as we claim we want to be like Jesus, we actually emulate the people who ain't doing anything else. Mm. I want to be like Jesus, but since they're not doing it, I'm not going to do it either. Mm. I want to be like Jesus, but since this person ain't making disciples, I'm not going to make disciples either. I want to be like Jesus because that person not supporting. I'm not going to support either. And so, unfortunately, um, then, then we uh, oftentimes you all act immature uh, while we're supposed to be maturing. One of the things I frequently say is, is, is uh, when people do things around the ministry, I say, thank you. But I also say you ain't doing it for me. You heard me say that. I thank you, but you ain't doing it for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, but not doing it for me. Because they're doing it for Jesus. Because what I never want anybody to do is get upset with me and stop doing what you're doing for Jesus. That's why I say thank you, but you ain't doing it for me. <laughs> I appreciate you, but understand you're doing it for Jesus. Mm. So when you get upset from, with me, keep working for Jesus. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, because if you think you're doing it for me, <laughs> then you'll stop doing it. I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I, I ain't, I'm upset with him. I ain't going to do it. Or oh, they ain't doing it. I ain't going to do it. No, you ain't doing it for me or nobody. You're doing it for Jesus. Yes. And so because you're doing it for Jesus, then don't let somebody else be your standard. Yes. Because, watch this, we are disciples of Jesus, not disciples of somebody else. And if I'm imitating Jesus, if you're imitating Jesus, we're imitating Jesus, then please help each other mature. Let's help each other mature and stop saying who is or is not. I, 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 I would to God that follows of Christ had their last day of saying what somebody else is not doing as, as if as if it's as, as if it's okay mm -hmm. just sit around and complain about it what are we doing 
Let's give our best for Jesus. Yes. And if somebody likes not to give their best for Jesus, guess who they not giving their best for? Jesus. Yes. They ain't not giving best for me. So I, I'm not frustrated when somebody don't do. I, I want people to do. It can tend to be fresh, but that's where maturity comes in to help others. So we have to help you. And, and we got to balance that. The book I got that has the missionaries reading it is about, I understand how to balance that tension, that tension, that tension between uh, doing what we're supposed to do, but at the same time, not letting it impact us what we stop doing. <laughs> that tension between holding each other accountable, but not falling out with each other when somebody don't want to be held accountable. We, mm. we got to get the tension right. We got to get the tension right. Part of what I would dare say comes what you said. If we spend time in his presence and with him, uh, then, then we we so in love with him, realize he's more than enough, then we'll keep doing what he, he wants us to do. Yes. I can't say he more than enough, but then keep looking at you talking about, but well, how come you ain't doing something for him? Mm. Well, maybe he ain't more than enough for you. <laughs> wow. Wow. Hey, listen, you all, we're so glad you all celebrating Christ with us today. Um, this is the third Sunday, and you still can come out here. I've said it before. You, you come out here. I know we have Resurrection Sunday coming up. You don't have to swap Sundays off. Um, I, I would, I would again, no matter where you are in the world celebrating Christ with us, that you would not be content celebrating Christ by yourself. Yeah, be content in all things, but but that but not ce celebrating by yourself is one thing. I encourage you not to be content in. Oh, 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 only. I was talking about that. Oh, oh but oh, only, but seriously, only if and I ain't talking about that, you know. But only if seriously, only if we've given our very best to yes. try to get others to celebrate with us, and they won't. That's what I'm talking about. See, yes. if they won't. Then I'm content because I've done all I can. Mm -hmm. But but don't be content and because there's three point two billion or more still out there that need. Then we then there's more is exactly yes. amen. Then we have to look to do that. And 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 then uh, so you always are more than welcome to celebrate Christ with us in person at the worship center. Um, but then also engaging. And one last thing I, I found out. Um, uh, well, I'll talk about it later about the whole Facebook thing because I found some out last week I didn't know. But anyway, man, we have an exciting celebration of worship today. You all, we have trivia coming up soon. We have uh, some other announcements. Uh, we have some, some just some great things, uh, awesome praise and worship and season of worship. Uh, we have a flashback uh, to social momentum that happened just yesterday. The prayer of lament today, you all, and I think it goes to uh, what you were saying, even what I was saying is and god gave this to me last week we're going to lament today you all when we don't see the results we expected from the mission mm. when we don't see the results we expected we need to lament we need to lament that because sometimes we get frustrated mm -hmm. and we don't see the results mm -hmm. so we're going to lament that mm -hmm. today um of not seeing the results we expected from being on mission with the lord so that we can be on mission with the lord mm -hmm. what we want them to do today dear we want you to hit the like button, uh, subscribe if you have not, and also text um, someone the celebration of worship, share it on your social media platform, and worship like crazy. Worship like crazy. Listen, when you come in, if you're coming over from Facebook, I say this right now, go into a YouTube account, and you can kind of where you can engage with us. Worship like crazy. I'll be back real soon with uh, reminders. Um, the communion, get communion ready, and the prayer of lament. We'll see you real soon.
thinking about you Everybody say, oh! Oh, 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 God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life John 3:16 is for the whoever's wherever you came from whatever you've done and whoever you are I want you to know that according to John 3:16 right now you have an arms wide open welcome from God anybody everybody anywhere Whoever. John 3.16 isn't just for kids. It's for hurting mothers, broken fathers, and all of us. It isn't just for t-shirts and tattoos and bumper stickers and bookmarks. Because John 3.16 is not a decoration. It's a declaration. John 3.16 is an invitation to redemption, reconciliation, forgiveness, and eternal life. 
John 3.16 reminds us that the story of God isn't about a few special people making it up to God, but God making his way down to the rest of us, to the whoever's. John 3.16 is what God thinks about you. You are loved, welcomed, valued, seen, and you are invited. You are not half loved, you are not unseen, and you are not forgotten. John 3.16 is for the whoever's. John 3.16 is for you. John 3.16 is for me. announcement time the launching pad worldwide takeoff resurrection sunday worship jesus is lord sunday march 31st at 10 a.m come and get equipped to take god's peace to the places where you live learn work and play free professional digital family photos refreshments will be served after worship Youth Spring Break Photography Camp. Enroll your child in the Launching Pad Worldwide Spring Break Photography Camp. Your child will learn the fundamentals of photography. They will take digital photos, edit and develop them into videos. We will conclude the week with a fun, exciting field trip. The dates are April the 1st through the 5th, 2024. Time is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday to Thursday and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Friday. Where? Proviso Township for ages 7 to 13. The cost is $30 per person, non-refundable. It includes your supplies, daily snacks, a field trip, and the lunch. Scan the code to register today or visit us at www.lunchingpadww.net. Space is limited. Do you know that we are blessed to bless others? Have you engaged in blessed practices lately? E. Begin with prayer. Pray for others. L. Listen with an attentive ear. E. E. Share a meal with someone. S. Serve others. S. Share your story with others. Someone needs to hear about God. If you would like to know more about the blessed practices, you can contact us on our Facebook membership page or you can contact us at www.worlddeliverancecc.net thank you the launching pad worldwide takeoff would like to thank you for engaging and posting comments last sunday we would also like to thank you for posting your i will statements god bless you you are invited to join the Launching Pad Worldwide for prayer every Wednesday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. If you would like to receive weekly prayer reminders along with the Zoom link, text the word PRAY to 708-584-1128. God bless you. If you ever experience technical difficulties in the live 10 a.m. Sunday celebration of worship, please rejoin us on one of the following platforms. T.A. Clark for Ministry YouTube, The Launching Pad Worldwide YouTube, The Launching Pad Worldwide Facebook, The Launching Pad www.net backslash live hyphen worship, The Launching Pad Worldwide. Help us help others. You can text your dollar amount to 844-713-4622. God bless you. Just a reminder, you can also find us on Facebook. And please, take a minute and share this worship experience on your various social media platforms.
we would like to wish everyone born this month a very happy, happy birthday. God bless you. Good morning. Do you know you can follow Christ with the Launchy Pad Worldwide no matter where you live? Just text the word DISCIPLE to 708-584-1128 to find out additional information. God bless you. In the Bible, there's a guy named Abraham, and the very first thing God says to him is go. Leave everything you've ever known. Go to an unknown and uncharted place and I will bless you and you will be a blessing. Go, Abraham. And then there's Moses. And God meets him in the desert and speaks to him and says, go, Moses, go to the place you came from, to the people where you once were. Go, because I am sending you. Go and help my people find freedom and redemption. Go, Moses. And then there's Jeremiah, the prophet. He's young, he's inexperienced, he's afraid. And God says, go, Jeremiah. I'm with you. And then there's Elijah, Esther, Ezekiel, Ruth, and many others who heard the call of God to go, and they went. And then the final words of Jesus to his disciples before he ascended into heaven, go. I've heard it said that you can be comfortable or courageous, but you can't be bold. That's true for Abraham, true for Moses, true for Jeremiah, true for you, and true for me. See, in the Bible, there are comforting words like forgiveness, freedom, and redemption, and adoption. But in the Bible, there are also commanding words like repent, believe, follow, and go. Maybe that's the words you need to hear today, to go. Go across the room, across the hall, go across the street, go across the campus. Go across the city, the nation, go across the world, go. It's important for us to remember that this isn't just a command to go, this is an opportunity, an opportunity to bless and to bring hope and to be salt and to shine light in dark places and to give to others what was first given to us. You see, we don't just go because that's what good Christians do. We go because 2000 years ago, God looked down on a broken and hopeless and hurting world. And he looked on with compassion. And then he looked at his son, his one and only son, the one and only person who could do anything about it. And he looked at him and he said, go. And he did. And he lived, and he died, and he rose, and now he reigns. And now we go because he did it first. He moved from heaven to earth so that we could move from comfort to courage. And so that's my prayer for you. Not just that you would move to a new city with a new zip code, but that you would move from comfort to courage. That we would all move from complacency to urgency. My prayer for you is that the most beautiful thing in the world to you would not be cars, clothes, and careers, but the gospel of Jesus Christ, to know him and to make him known. And my prayer for you is that today you would put your yes on the table and you would leave it there to go wherever and whenever God leads you to go. And so I can't promise that it'll always be exciting. Can't promise it'll always be easy. Can't promise it'll always make sense, but I can promise you this, it will always be worth it. Greetings and welcome to the Launching Pad Worldwide. Today's scripture is Luke chapter 15 verses 12 
13, 17, and 20 through 24, which reads, The younger son said to his father, Give me my share of the property. So the father divided the property between his two sons. Then the younger son gathered up all that was his and traveled far away to another country. There he wasted his money in foolish living. When he came back to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. And God's word is already blessed. Shall we pray? King of glory, great creator of the universe, we greet you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for this day and all that it will bring. You are a wonderful God. You have blessed us and kept us to see another marvelous day. We rejoice in this opportunity to talk with you and hear what you would have us to know from you. You have brought us together at this appointed time and place for the purpose of preparing us and equipping us for the mission of sharing your peace with all people. Thank you for bringing us together in unity of faith and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. As we hear your word today, help us to understand what you're saying and what we should be doing about it. Help us to see others as you see them and love them as you love us. Help, help those we meet in our communities, in our work, and in our places of leisure to see you through us. As your word works in and through us, thank you for always being with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We equip people to bring the peace of God to the places they live, work, learn, and play. We are the Launching Pad Worldwide. Greetings and welcome to the Launching Pad Worldwide. Today's devotion to scripture is Luke 15, verses 12, 13, 17, and 20 through 24 which reads, The younger son said to his father, Give me my share of the property. So the father divided the property between his two sons. Then the younger son gathered up all that was his and traveled far away to another country. There he wasted his money in foolish living. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. And God's word is already blessed. This passage is Jesus' parable of the prodigal son. Prodigal means spending money or resources freely and recklessly to be wastefully extravagant. It paints a picture of repentance, forgiveness, redemption, and God's unconditional love for us. The theme is lost and found, 
and tells us of a son who asks for and receives his inheritance while his father is still living. The father leaves, the son leaves his father and family to indulge in wasteful, extravagant living with his friends. His father may have been disappointed at the son's choice, but honors it not nonetheless. The father is a metaphor for God who gives mankind freedom of choice or free will. However, we see that our choices come with the corresponding consequences. There is a price to be paid when we are disobedient. The son becomes spiritually dead because of his poor choice, relationally dead because of his friends not caring about his life. The money was gone, so his friends were gone. And he was on the path to being physically dead because of famine. The son's journey also teaches us about the importance of repentance and forgiveness. Even though the son makes some major mistakes, his father still welcomes him home and is happy to see him. So briefly, here are four points we should consider today. Number one, God's love is unconditional. Acts 3, 18 and 19. God is a loving father who will forgive his children when we repent. Number two, don't take God's forgiveness for granted, 1 John 1 and 8. Forgiveness is often difficult but necessary for healing and reconciliation. Forgiveness of and for ourselves and forgiveness of others. Number three, admit when we're wrong, 1 John 1 and 9. Repentance and humility go hand in hand. Appreciate what we have, no matter how much. If the younger son had appreciated his home in the first place, it would have saved him a lot of grief and despair. Find joy in the simple things and be thankful for the blessings we often take for granted. Look at God's creation and our place in it. And lastly, even though we don't deserve it, God is merciful. Exodus 34 and 6. Remember, Jesus came to reconcile us to the Father and to bring us peace. So as we go through our day, remember the importance of repentance, humility, forgiveness, and reconciliation in our relationship with God and in our relationships with each other. May God's peace be with you. Amen. Love, the greatest of all the commandments. This is what our world so desperately needs. In a world often marred by division and strife, it's crucial to remember that love is not just an emotion. It's the very essence of our faith. We need an infusion of Christ's love into our lives. As followers of Christ, we are called to love one another unconditionally, just as our Savior loves us. God's heart is true and tender. His love knows no bounds. Jesus loved the sick the liars, the poor, and the betrayers. Let us make our love like His, knowing no bounds. Love is not restricted based on income or race, addiction or life choices. It has the power to heal wounds, bridge divides, and mend broken hearts. Love is patient, love is kind, and love never fails. In this world where chaos may reign, let love be our guiding light, our source of strength, and our legacy as believers. For in love, we find the power to change the world.
thinking about you. Oh, oh, oh Jesus, I'm so in love with you. You drive me crazy. Can't stop thinking about you. Everybody say, oh. oh, oh, oh You drive me crazy. You drive me crazy. 
are worshiping with the launching pad worldwide here at the launching pad we know that worship is about more than singing it's about living as though jesus is lord in every area of your life and yes that includes your finances at the launching pad we give with the heart of generosity just like jesus your gift is an investment not just in the launch you pay, but in the mission of God. You help us bring God's love and peace to the 3.2 billion people who do not know Jesus Christ. There are several ways that you can invest in the Launch You Pay worldwide. The first way is you can give on our church website. The second way is you can text your investment to 844 713 Four six two two, and the third way you can mail in your investment to PO Box seven three five, Maywood, Illinois six zero one five three. Thank you and God bless. Good morning. Welcome to the Launching Pad Worldwide. I am Pauline, and I want to talk about listening with compassion. Listen is an art that most people have yet to grasp. They are too busy with their lives or jobs or don't care to talk with someone in need. But we as followers of Christ must be imitators of Christ and change how we see people. People are hurting and need someone to listen to their story and not be judged. To listen means to engage the heart and not simply the head. Proverbs 18, 13 says that anyone who answers without listening is foolish and confused. That means stop pushing your agenda into someone else's thoughts and listening to them so that they can feel comfortable inviting us into their lives. Let us all be quick to listen and slow to speak. Mark 4, 24. Think careful about what you hear and the way you give to others is the way God will give to you. But God will give you even more so listen very carefully with the Holy Spirit and allow Him to let you respond at the appropriate time. But right now, all we have to do is listen. God bless you. thank God for um, the celebration of worship, you all, and I have been uh, blessed as we've been celebrating Christ today, but I know I'm not the only one who's been blessed as we've been celebrating Jesus on today, and I'm not here by myself in a second. I'm going to ask those who are here with me to make some noise so that uh, you will know that there are other people here celebrating Christ with me as well. We'll get to that in just one second. I, I want to couple of, of, of observations. One observation I want to make is, yes, uh, thank God for just everything that everyone who contributes uh, has contributed to the celebration of worship on, on today. Um, Ruth Price did a great job with the devotion. 
And then Pauline did a great job with the blessed um, rhythms, blessed practices. Not, they're not the blessed principles because we don't live a propositional life. They're not just principles that we study. They're practices that we live. They're the rhythms that become a part of our life. And, and so thank God for, for both of them and what they did um, in, in, in the celebration of worship. And also thank God for everyone uh, here who is, is, is all of you, no matter where you are celebrating. I, I see you down there in Missouri, uh, Jayla, and thank God. And, and I saw the comment. Yes, I'm excited about what can happen with the missional communities uh, that, can, that can take place and will take place and will grow and make disciples in Missouri. I'm excited about those in, in South Carolina. I'm excited, or North Carolina. I'm excited about uh, George. I'm excited about Iowa. I'm excited about everything that everyone is doing for Jesus as we celebrate him. The other observation I want to make you all, this song uh, said, Jesus, you drive me crazy. My wife and I and, and Bell, uh, we were in South Africa uh, several years ago and at, at, and we heard at Dr. T.Y. Fooney, the, the churchy pastors, we heard that song. And oh my gosh, um, it, it was something to hear them as, as the praise team uh, was on the stage, uh, Jeanette, and they were singing that song. And when they got to the chorus and you drive me crazy, they all jumped off the stage and just started going crazy. Talking about how Jesus drove them crazy, you know, but it was a good crazy. It wasn't, uh, you know, an insane asylum crazy. It was a good crazy. And and then it was funny because we went back to Jesus, I was so in love with you. They ran back on the stage and sang that part. And then we got back to crazy. They jumped in. And, and, and by the third time they did it, you all, uh, even those of us from America, we found ourselves jumping around going crazy because we all were talking about just what Jesus can do for us. And, and so it was it was it was incredible. It was indeed in, incredible. Um, thank God for for last last Sunday. And um, I, I want to say one thing and, and we're going to have to make a, 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 a go back to how it was for the four o'clock relaunch um, because we, we, we put it on uh, YouTube the relaunch at four o'clock, just the sermon only that, 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 that comes on. So people can engage and we put on YouTube and we put the link on Facebook. And I didn't know what I did not know is always on YouTube in, in terms of on, on the account that I have on YouTube on Sunday mornings. And then on Sunday afternoons at four o'clock, I'm on my account on Facebook. I didn't know that when you click the link to come from Facebook to YouTube, you cannot engage. You can watch only. I didn't know that. And and so um, we're going to have to do that like we were and just pray and hope that they don't take it down. They, they took it down, started issue two weeks ago. I, it was crazy. Facebook took it down and we didn't do anything wrong. And in turn, I told you, Obama said one name. They thought he said somebody else's name and, and thought he was infringing somebody's copyright. And, and and so they took it down. Um, but we just gonna believe the Lord um is stay up. And then those who want to hear uh Lost and Found part one that Bonner preached, it always lives on YouTube. You can go back and hear it. And I, I think I, I just believe because of the the, the power and Alicia of that message, uh that, that was just something trying to prevent people from hearing how much the Lord loves them. That was trying to prevent hearing how much the Lord wants to use them to be able to make disciples for him and his kingdom. So we go back to how, how it was uh, before, um, and thank you all for that. Listen, you saw the information, uh, the flashback. That was just yesterday with the vision board. That was part of our social momentum uh, that we do in Bellwood. All the missional communities are asked to have social momentum in the community in which you live. The purpose of social momentum, you all, is, is so that people can see followers of Christ uh, gathering together and being the light. Okay? No, no one of us can be the light by ourselves. And Jesus said, you are the light of the world. He was talking to his disciples. That was Sermon on the Mountain, Minor. He was not talking just to Peter or, or, or just to James or John. He was talking to all of the disciples, which meant he's talking to all of us as his disciples because no one of us can be the light this dark world needs by ourselves. And so he's the only one lighting everything up by himself. Other than that, we need each other. And, and so social momentum allows us to be that counterculture people living as a light together in community in front of other people so they can see as we uh, engage each other and invite them to engage with us, it's just us hanging out and like Pauline said, inviting people into our lives so they trust us enough to invite us back into their lives. That's the purpose. That's different 
than you all uh, doing a service project. Service project is us hands on serving people. Social momentum and service not the same. Service projects is us actually hands on serving people and watch this and not and I ain't tripping on nothing nobody done, but we got to make sure we always again hold each other accountable and not just sending money somebody to I'm serving. Or, or not 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 just you know, I, I appreciate what we do with Feed My Sovereign too, but not just going pack a lunch that they going to send overseas that we serve. And no, service means you we actually touch people. My gosh, we touch people who need to be touched. And it helps us, Gene, be sensitive uh, to, to the to, and empathetic to the to the plight of other people. How are we saying we follow Jesus and we have no empathy to the people who are less fortunate, to the marginalized. Jesus was empathetic towards us, Tarisha. He came to be with us. He touched us. John 6, when, when, when the crowd, Ruth Price, was hungry, Jesus said, no, feed them. I'm empathizing with them. I don't want them. They've been with me all day. I've been teaching, and they will die going home. The type of said, we ain't got no food. He said, well, look among you. You do something about it. Care about them beyond because she's beyond um, the inconvenience of, of yourself. My gosh, sometimes you got to be you. You will be inconvenienced to let people know that they're loved by you or loved by God through you. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it takes you out of a comfort zone, um, but but that's where it is. You can't meet people where they are and be comfortable at the same time. You know that that video, the go video. You can be courageous or comfortable, but you can't be both. And I'm afraid too many people are trying to be comfortable, not be courageous. Oh my gosh. So we need the we need the social momentum, but we also need the service project, you all. So yesterday was a social momentum well, in Bellwood, and we once a month our mission communities come by and, and, and do that. And so thank you to the communities that did that yesterday and, and, and off the vision board for families, and, and we'll keep doing that. Uh, we want what's coming up soon. Part of it is, is our spring camp. If you want to sponsor, we have some who have sponsored you. This $30 per child for the spring camp. We have limited space. We have a few slots left. People are signing up. If you want to sponsor, you don't have to have a child to sponsor somebody for the spring camp. Only $30. And there is photography camp. They're going to learn from a professional photographer how to take pictures. They're going to be able to meet the mayor of Bellwood and meet the department heads in Bellwood, have lunch with the mayor of Bellwood and hear his story. That man has an awesome story. For those who don't know, Mayor Harvey is the, was the first black fire chief in the village of Bellwood. He was the first black mayor in Bellwood. And there's a lot of other things um, that he shares that's a part of his very provocative, powerful story that our youth can learn. And then they're going to hear the history of this community because they need to know the history. And then third Wednesday and Thursday, um, they, Wednesday, they're going to learn how to do research on the community from a librarian. And they're going to take pictures what they, based on what they've learned. And Thursday, they're going to take pictures. And then Friday, they're going to have a good day at, at one of the local uh, 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 areas where they can go play games and hang out. It's going to be an awesome spring camp. And again, you don't have to have a child to sponsor a child for the spring camp. Because guess what? There are some children in this di in the school district, District 88 of Bellwood, District 88, whose parents can't necessarily afford to send them to the camp. But guess what? You can afford to help send a child to the camp. And I promise you, I promise you, if you sponsor a child, that money will not go to waste. It will not go to waste. We've talked to the school district. They are in touch. They know it's families are in need, Gene. And, and, and so we let them know how many scholarships we have we've had available. And 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 so now I'm saying this now because I'm not announcing how many we got available. I don't need nobody to come up with me. No, the school district is gonna manage that part. That way we know it's going that way we know people need are really gonna get it. But what you can do is you can help and not take away because we, we, we talk about generosity, and that's what happens, you all. We serve a generous God. And so being generous only tries to match what he is towards us, you all, and that is generous. There's nothing you give that he didn't first give to you. Oh, my gosh. But we're not gifting. We're only re-gifting. That's all we're doing to Maya is re-gifting that which the Lord has given to us. Listen, you all, um, I, I want to Matthias. Juju, get ready. You can come help me with communion in just a second. So you're going to help me with communion. Uh, Resurrection Sunday is in two weeks, you all. 
And um, now, again, you can be here any Sunday, any Sunday you can be here. But in two weeks is Resurrection Sunday. And I'm encouraging us to, uh, to encourage others. Again, whether you live in this area, come on to the worship center. If you live elsewhere, get people to worship with you. Get them worship with you are. Because, again, this is this is being equipped. This is equipping. We ain't just in service. And I told you all before I say it again, when you're with us on Sundays, uh, if you're not in the worship center, you're never watching. You're engaging. I don't even use that. That watching is a bad word to me. That that's that's a that's that's one of them wash your mouth out with soap words on Sunday morning. Me, because you ain't watching. We're engaging. We're we're worshiping the Lord. We're not just sitting back being entertained. We're engaging in the celebration of worship. And so thank you. And so and and what better time? And especially on Resurrection Sunday morning, when we remember every Sunday, we remember what Jesus did for us. But then Resurrection Sunday morning, the day that is set aside to commemorate uh, and remember how he got up with all power in his hands. I'll talk more about uh, uh, the purpose and what the real God, the gospel is, is the fact that Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise God made to Abraham to give us the peace that we're missing. How did that peace come? Through his death. He had to die so we can get back to right relationship with the Lord. Come on up here, Juju, please. And, and he's going to come help me with the communion. Make sure you have your communion too. Okay, cool. He said, I got it. I got it. I got it. I ain't coming empty handed. I got it. So, so, so this is you all the love feast. That's what this is. This is the love feast. It was established by Jesus over 2000 years ago on the night in which, uh, he ultimately, well, first of all, he took his last supper. He instituted what we know as the Eucharist communion or the Lord's supper. Ultimately, you all, uh, he left there. He prayed a priestly prayer. Jesus was arrested. He was tried in the kangaroo court, Felicia, six trials, and they couldn't get two people to agree on the same charge against him. They had trumped up charges against Jesus, Autumn, trumped up charges. They went against their own law, Starisha. The law from God, which the people were trying him, said, you need two witnesses to corroborate. You don't condemn somebody based on one witness. You need two witnesses. They couldn't even get two witnesses to corroborate what they were saying about him. Yet, at the conclusion of those trials, he was convicted. He was sentenced. And he died. But, oh, he got up again with all power in his hands. And so every time we take this feast, the love feast, the agape feast, we do this in remembrance of what he did for us. We don't just remember that he woke you up. Thank God he woke you up this morning. But more than that, you all, he came to die to give us the peace we need, the peace we lack, the peace, you all, that sin uh, caused us in the fall to no longer have with him. And so we remember that. And everyone is welcomed to this table. Again, if he invited Judas to the table, he let Peter, who, who right after dinner, was right after dinner, went and denied he knew him three times. He invited them to the table. We can invite any, everyone to this table. And what better way for, for people who don't yet know Christ or unchurched to experience him, Nalisha, then to sit at the table and then hear someone who does know him share what he means to them. And so that's why everyone is welcome, but only those who are following him actually can lead us in this. That's the distinction. Everybody can't lead because you can't tell me what he means until you actually want to follow him. But you're welcome to eat with us. So whether you have the juice and the wafer like we have, or you have bread and water, your crackers and, and, and orange juice or whatever you have, it represents the body and blood of Jesus. Because there's no excuse for any of us not 
to eat the love feast together. So I'm going to ask this young man here and 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 he's up here and 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 some of y'all may lose y'all stuff. He got a hat on. What's on your head? Mm. Don't shake it like a salt shaker, baby. Now, anyway, what's on your head? And, and so and and so what he's going to do is he's going to uh, first of all he's going to pray and thank God for the elements. Whatever it is we have, he's going to thank God for it. Secondly, I'm going to ask him to share one something, I don't mean one word, but something that the life, death, burial, and resurrection means to you. And then thirdly, you're going to lead us in it. So first of all, pray and thank God for our community. Thank you. Thank you, God, for this day. God, thank you for another day and opportunity to celebrate you, God. Thank you for everything you did for me and every soul on this earth. I thank you, God, for the sacrifice of your son for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, share something that the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus means to you. And use your outside voice in this mic. <laughs> what it means to me is forgiving love. Wow. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Don't y'all sleep on our youth or any of them. That's why I keep them engaged. Keep them engaged. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Cause I, I listen, man, we would, and I ain't tripping on nobody. We were doing the youth church thing as if they, as if they had a, lived in an alternate universe. <laughs> then we wonder why when they got grown, they couldn't adapt to adult church. Ain't no such thing as youth in adult church. There's only one church, the church of Jesus Christ. He's Lord of all. Don't sleep on them. They face the same challenges. They got the same Jesus. Help them have the same grace. Lead us in this, please. Please. Come out this, please. Feel back to first. <laughs> we may eat together. Peel back the second layer. And we may drink together. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah, please. Thank you. Thank you so much. He did a great job, you all. He did a great job, you all. Amen. 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 Years ago, a few years ago, we had a man who uh, had join with us and uh, we were taking communion and a woman was serving it and he refused to take communion because a woman was serving it. And so he wouldn't even take communion because a woman was serving it. Go back to what I said at 945, y'all. You ain't doing it for me. You're doing it for the Lord. <laughs> as often as you do it, do remembers of him. I said that because somebody this is a child. Yep. But you ain't doing it for that child. You're doing it in remembrance of Jesus. Let me leave it alone. We go into the prayer of lament now, you all. And 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 um, the prayer itself is coming from Psalm number 22. We're lamenting today, you all, uh, when we don't see the results we want to see from the mission. We need to live as missionaries. We, we, we need not just live. We, need to, we, we have to be missionaries. The Lord would have us to be missionaries for him. I shared Jeanette's uh, group this past Monday. I've said it before, but it, and it bears repeating. I talked to Howard last night. I told him the same thing. I'm about to say right now with Christ, and that is we are those who follow Jesus we are on L-O-A-N, loan to this earth. That's it. We're on loan to this earth. This earth, and it ain't just no cute little song. It really is not our home. We're citizens with, with him where he is. We're residents on this earth. We're not just citizens where he is and residents, where it be in Chicago, St. Louis, Ferguson, you know, any place else. No, you all, we are literally citizens of where the Lord is, and we're residents of this earth. 
Now, why is that important to know we're on loan, L-O-A-N? Because at some point, you are, first of all, because at some point, he's going to call us back. But in addition to that, because we're citizens elsewhere and residents here, we are what's called resident aliens. That is, we really don't belong to this earth. That makes the aliens, but we're residents. We represent our home. We represent the king. We represent his kingdom on this earth. Jesus said it very clearly, you all, in Matthew chapter 6, when he gave the disciples prayer, he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. It is our job to expand his kingdom on this earth, Autumn. That's our job. So any place his kingdom doesn't exist, we got to take it there. And every place his kingdom does exist, we got to expand it there. Y'all see how that works? We're never in a position or a place where we say, well, the kingdom is here, so my job is your job ain't done expand. There's still 3.2 billion people who don't know Jesus. Never heard the name Jesus. But because of that, because we're missionaries, if we're really going to say the Missio Dei, M-I-S-S-I-O-D-E-I, capital D-E-I, uh, the mission of God, if we're really going to stand by mission of God, one of the things that's going to happen then, Gene, is, uh, yeah, we have to change the rhythms of our life, but we're going to be frustrated sometimes. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're going to really live, I ain't just talking about looked at my hands and my hands look new. I looked at my feet and made it. I mean, if you're really going to live as missionaries for Jesus, what the rhythm of our life have changed, uh, Timothy, then we're going to be frustrated sometimes. You can't want to make disciples, Marjorie, for Jesus and then not see it happen because it ain't always going to happen like we think it's going to happen. One of the things Neil Cole say, wrote to me, he told me, you all, and look him up later when you get a chance. Not right now when you get a chance, but but awesome missiologist and an awesome man of God, an awesome author. And and one of the things he told me, he said, uh, he said, he praying, we saw the vision that God had for then world deliverance and now the launching pad. Uh, and, and two things he said, actually, one thing he said, he saw the vision, he said, it's not going to happen how you think it's going to happen but that's to be expected because anything do for Jesus, it ain't going to happen. How you think it ain't going to be, I'm going to go A, B, C, D. It ain't going to happen like that. He's just the second thing he said. And, and, and we shared this before. He said, you might want to consider the name. He said, because if you're talking about telling people to go make disciples and you say you're the center, your name contradicts and pulls against what you tell people to do. The center says all about us making disciples is all about him. Oh my gosh. Hence we became the launching pad because <laughs> we send people out. You get equipped to go back out. But a couple of weeks ago when I was praying about the prayer, I was praying the prayer lament he wanted us to share. And, and, and I was just, I think it was a disillusion. I just was frustrated. I get frustrated. I was frustrated. Sorry, Asian. Thinking about some stuff about the vision. I'm not the vision. I'm sorry. The mission of God and, and, and living to the mission, not the vision, but the mission of God. And and, and 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 the results. And we're gonna lament that. But then I I, I looked up something and I give credit credit to dude named Mark Vorovgop. Uh he wrote something, an article, and it says four ways lament can help missionaries persevere. So I'm gonna give you these four ways, then we're gonna then we're gonna go on lament exercise and pray the prayer of lament. Four ways lament can help missionaries persevere. In light you all of unique pressures uh, missionaries could benefit from studying the language of lament so they will have an outlet Kimberly for the expected challenges of the mission field so here Desmond are four ways lament can help us first of all number one is loss missionaries we uncurl our fingers from things that most people take for granted that is friendship now remember he, he's writing this Felicia about going to foreign mission fields, but I told you we on loan to this earth. So this earth actually, Mars Rig is a foreign mission field for us. I hope y'all get that. And if we we're gonna follow Jesus, don't don't think about leaving here and going overseas. Think about the fact that you you that from glory to this earth, and, and so it's still it's still applicable contextually. Okay, so so friendships at home, birthday parties with family, a spiritually helpful church community a familiar culture and a native language are just a few examples.
but there are many more. He says, while I'm sure the calculus of serving as a missionary factored those losses into the equation, it can take an emotional toll on us. When you're really following Jesus and living as a missionary, Joanna Bonner, um, you ain't going to fit in the place you used to fit in. The people you used to hang out with are going to say you acting strange. The people who want you to come back and hang with them, they're going to, oh, you think you're better than us now. It's going to happen. So, and, 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 and we got to experience, and that's a long and a loss some of us will have. You, you, got to, you got to understand that that comes with the territory. You can't follow Jesus and follow somebody else at the same time. And don't tell that lie. Tell me, well, I'm walking with them and, and, and meeting where they are. Well, you might be. The, the problem ain't meeting where they are. The problem is you doing what they do when you meet them where they are. Ooh, wee. That's the difference. That's how you know you ain't following Jesus. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Number two is conflict. Life on the foreign field creates unique relational tensions. This earth is the foreign field for us. He says, as a pastor for over two decades, he's witnessed firsthand the relational challenges in missionary families. Marriages can struggle, parental decisions can be loaded with nuanced guilt. It's hard to the family in the mission field because the culture that pulls on people is, hard, is, is challenging. Being single isn't easy either. Friendships can be loaded, uh, can be strained. That is, the expectations are met. Loneliness can settle in like a lingering fog. And there are a team of dynamics. The entrepreneurial drive that leads to the field can implode when trying to work with other people. Because you got you to work with other people in the mission field. Other missionaries, we have to. And we're always going to see face eye to eye, don't agree, but yet we have to help each other mature. Lament then is a safe place for an honest processing of those pains. It shouldn't replace a counselor when someone needs counseling, but learning to lament would allow weary, ser uh, allow weary servants to lay out their struggles to the very God who called them to the field. Lament won't solve all relational conflict. But it does lead our heart to the right place, making kindness and reconciliation more likely. Amen. Because we have to reckon, we have to be quick to reconcile and forgive. Number three is culture. Lost conflict. Number three is culture. Four ways that can help us. Navigating an unfamiliar culture is shocking. One of their missionaries recently told him that the first six months are the hardest. Yeah, when we start living for Jesus and change the rhythm of your life, oh, it's going to be challenging tonight. It's going to be challenging. But the stress of navigating the culture remained for almost two years. He said sometimes just paying a bill was exhausting because it ain't going to be the same. Some of the things we had, you all, some the, st the stressors changed. He could hardly do anything else all day. Adding a language barrier, hostility toward the gospel, and a massive need, and you have an extremely stressful ministry. Imagine a weary heart of missionary praying, and just imagine they're praying this. Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, I find no rest. That's from Psalm 22. We're going to be praying Psalm 22 soon. That's a prayer of lament that Jesus actually prayed. That's his prayer of lament. On the cross, he prayed that. And then consider a prayer that continues into the rehearsing of God's faithfulness, the attached of the afflicted that it shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember you and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before you. That's also Psalm 22, as David wrote. Again, Jesus quoted uh, when he died, some of what David wrote. Lament possesses the potential of honest wrestling and hopeful remembering when the culture is difficult. And then number four, number four, you all, they can help us. What four ways lament can help is with disappointment. Progress in hard places is slow. Dreams collide with reality. Open doors sometimes close quickly. Evangelism often requires years of planting before the harvest. Disappointment may rise on the horizon and linger. When the struggles of ministry create sorrow, the language of lament can help. Like Asaph in Psalm 77, Pauline, God invites us to keep talking to him, especially when we're disappointed. He says, in the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. That's from Psalm 77. 
Lament expresses our sadness and frustration so we can move through it. Lament will not solve all the challenges and it will never provide everything missionaries need. But lament is a helpful language to learn. While missionaries learn the culture, peoples, and the language, Wendy, it would also be helpful to become fluent in lament. We need to lament you all. So I'm going to ask you where you are right now uh, to, to understand and realize the spiritual practice of lament is designed to give voice to the pain of each individual who is suffering pain or a loss. In this case, uh, when we are, uh, don't see the results uh, we expect it from the mission, uh, yet we do know they're going to come. That's why we lament and trust him in this gene. And for the community to show solidarity to those who suffer, we show solidarity to other people who in the midst of this are also lamenting, are also challenged as they live as missionaries. The book of Psalm is made of 150 songs of those in Alicia nearly one third are classified as songs of lament, also known as songs of disorientation. So I'm going to ask you to settle your body and mind where you are right now. Close your eyes. Be present in the moment. And, and once you're present in the moment, identify one or more areas uh, where you need to let go of or surrender uh, because of your frustration uh, uh, and, and, and not seeing the mission happen as you thought it should happen, as you wanted it to happen, or as fast as you thought it should happen. Or perhaps that person, your frank list, ha hasn't responded how you think they should respond or, or as you're trying to live the blessed rhythms and, and you keep getting pushed back identify uh, that the frustration and, and that you want to let go of. Now call out to the spirit, the capital S spirit, using whatever name best expresses your connectedness and sacred relationship with God. You may say daddy. You may say father. You may say Lord. You may say Jesus. You may say Christ. You may say Holy Ghost. You may say Holy Spirit. Whatever name you use, invite God to be present as you allow yourself to lament this, 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 this uh, disillusionment or even you all not seeing the results of the mission as you want. Now identify how this disillusionment or, or how the frustration or how just the pain or how the disappointment at times might impact you and the people you care about. Notice how your body and emotions react as you contemplate the situation. Now experience any grief that is sadness, anger, disorientation, etc., and be a specific and honest as you can. Be honest with the Lord about how you feel about it. It's his mission, not yours. So be honest about how you, uh, how you feel about his mission. Let your emotions flow and allow yourself to use whatever words for most appropriate. Now hand that grief over to the capital S spirit, asking for an awareness of his care. If God's care in and through this time, you all of lamenting the results of the mission. Allow yourself to move toward gratitude that the spirit, capital S spirit, is with you in this time of lament. And what their heads still bow and eyes still close. Let's pray uh, from Psalm 22. And this is entitled the prayer of a suffering man. And you probably can see why Jesus prayed some of this when he was on the cross. We greet you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We thank you for this day, we thank you for being the triune God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, dear God, as you remind us that is not our mission, it's your mission. You remind us, dear God, that the church does not have a mission. The mission of God has a church. And so because the only reason we've gathered, not just in this place today, not just where we are today, but only we're, we're this gathered people under you, with you being the head of the church, is because of your mission. Absent your mission, we have no reason to be anything. Absent your mission, we have no reason to be the church. We have no reason to make disciples except for your mission. So we come talking to you about your mission. We want to be obedient to you in your mission. And yet, God, we can admit there are times in the midst of trying to do what you cause to do in your mission. We haven't seen it happen how we thought it would happen, how we wanted it to happen, how we imagined or even envisioned it happening. And we prayed what the psalmist prayed and what Jesus even prayed on the cross. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Hmm. 
Sometimes, dear God, in the midst of doing what you told us to do, we feel like you seem so far from saving us, far away from our groans, as, as if, dear God, we're doing this, and it's like sometimes you're not even listening to us. The psalmist says in verse 2, my God, we call you during the day, and sometimes it seems you're not answering. We call at night. And then at nighttime, we are not silent then. We're calling you day and night, night and day, telling you, God, that we need you, telling you, God, what we're trying to do for you, telling you, God, we're doing the best we can. We've unlearned to relearn. We've tried to change the rhythm of our lives. And yet sometimes, God, we don't see the results that we know we're supposed to have. Verse 4 in Psalm 22, dear God, the psalmist says, we pray our ancestors, though before us trusted you, they trusted you and we saw you save them. We heard their testimonies. They called to you for help and they seemed like they were rescued. They trusted you and they were not disappointed. Oh my gosh, but we sometimes feel like a worm instead of men and women. People make fun of us and they hate us. And despite what we do, what we've done, dear God, it seems like sometimes our calls are going unheard. People look at us and they make fun of us. Those who look at us laugh at us. They mock us, stick out their tongues and shake their heads. And they say that we can turn to God for help and maybe you will save us. Then they get sarcastic and they say the psalmist, if he likes you, maybe he'll rescue you. And they tend to impugn our relationship with you. They doubt if they, they ain't going to do all of that. And besides, they don't see that it'll seem like you hearing us. Dear God, you had our mother give birth to us. You made us trust you while we were still young. Some of us, dear God, came up in your church. We've learned, we've leaned on you since we were born. You've been our God since our parents gave birth or exposed us to your will and word and way. And we thank you. We can come to you, Father, and say, don't be far from us now that trouble is near and there's no one to help us. Your same God we've been trusting in, dear God, we turn to you right now. As the psalmist says in verse 14, our strength is gone like water poured out onto the ground. Our strength is gone and our bones out of joint. We just feel discombobulated sometimes, dear God. Our heart is like wax. It's like it's melted inside of us. Sometimes, dear God, we're discouraged. Sometimes, dear God, we're frustrated, dear God. And, and our strength has dried up like a clay pot and our tongue sticks to the top of our mouth. God, you laid us in the dust of death. This is how we feel sometimes, God. We're trying to do what you called us to do, yet, dear God, it's causing us sometimes to fall out with each other. It's causing us sometimes, dear God, to, to not want to trust one another. It's causing us, dear God, not you, you're not doing it, but just us doing what you do, dear God. This is the frustration sometimes we have and, and the disillusion we have. And, and we, we pick up the paper and we, we, we turn on the computer and we, we see the news, dear God, and we hear the radio. We see, dear God, the perpetuation, the perpetuation of evil all around us, yet we're trying to do what you called us to do. So we say in verse, like say in verse 19, don't be far away. You are our strength, so hurry to come help us. Thank you, Jesus. Save us, dear God, from the sword. Save our life from the dogs that wouldn't attack us. Rescue us from the lion's mouth. Save us from the horns of bulls. Anything that would try to discourage us and try to attack us and try to hurt us and harm us as we're doing the mission, not just physically, but emotionally and financially and mentally. Do we pray, God, to, for you to save and keep us and help us? Because as you do that, here's what we're going to do, Jesus. We're going to tell our brothers and sisters about you. Hallelujah. As you help us, we're going to praise you in the public meeting. Hallelujah. We're going to praise and we're going to encourage other people. Praise the Lord, all who respect him, all who are descendants of him, honor him, fear him. Every person who's a child of God, respect him. Thank you, Jesus. And as we end this prayer, we look at what the psalmist says in verse 27. Because of what we're doing for you. It ain't about us, it's about you. And as you help us, we know people everywhere are going to remember and turn to you. That's our hope, dear God. 
despite what it seemed like and looked like, people everywhere are going to remember and turn to you. All the families of the nations will begin to worship. Hallelujah. They're going to start worshiping you. Some of those 3.2 billion people are going to turn to you because of what we're doing for you. We ain't quitting. We ain't giving up. That's why we lamented to tell you how we feel so we can get energized to go back out for you again. Because the Lord is king and you rule the nations. Hallelujah. You have not abdicated your authority or the throne. You still reign. You still rule. All the powerful people on earth will eat and worship and everyone ultimately have to bow down before you. Everyone who one day is going to die your word says every knee is going to have to bow. So thank you, Jesus. We're going to do our job to help them bow now while they can before they're forced to bow and then be separated. The people in the future will serve you. Hallelujah. They will always be told about the Lord. The people in the future, dear God, will tell what he, that he does what is right. People, because of what we're doing today, it ain't, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People who are not yet born are going to hear what God has done. Hallelujah. Those who ain't even born yet, because what we're doing now, making disciples, the disciples we make will make disciples who make disciples. And whether they remember our name or not is not important as long as they know to call your name. Hallelujah. And we would have contributed to generations from now, if you delay your coming, calling on the name of Jesus. Thank you for it right now, dear. We love you for it right now, dear God. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Listen, you all, um, thank God for that. The prayers of lament are always shared on social media. Uh, you can check out our social media pages and you can engaging them and sharing with other people. Let's all stand. It's time for our season of worship. And as we uh, have our season of worship and we sing, then we'll come back with the word of God. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Jamar, turn me up just a little bit, please, and my microphone up a little bit. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you. Listen, first of all, thank everyone who's engaging with us today. I'm not certain what happened to comments. Don't worry about it. You still write comments like you have been. Maybe they'll come up later on. And not, don't not write comments um, if you're on the TA Clark 4. Those on the launching pad page, those comments apparently are being seen. Um, but the TA Clark 4, for some reason, not. We ain't going to worry about that. We got a word of the Lord to share. Amen. Listen, I'm by myself. Those who are here, we make some noise real quick, please. Amen. Thank you. Yes, I'm not by myself. And, and y'all didn't see Jean, my mother in love. I said, make some noise. She started waving too. She said, y'all can't, hey, y'all, she can't see it. And, but we thank God. We thank God. Listen, we're going to get to the to the word of God. And, and as we go along, you see a word that's underlined, um, then shout it out and write it in the comment. Again, it'll come up soon enough, uh, I believe. But even if it doesn't, we still going to do what we do. And we're going to uh, go through this word on on this morning with in this series which one are you put the scripture up please and um, ruth price did a great job in in covering everything uh as far as all the verses we're going to though um just read a few verses and, and then we're going to cover everything else in the word now so i don't read them all because we're going to cover them all and and so uh amen all right it reads as follows uh the son said father i've sinned against god and against you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, my son was dead, but now he is alive again. He was lost, but now he is what? Found. So they begin to celebrate. I want to speak from this thought today, you all. Real choices, real consequences, real love. Amen. Grab a seat, grab a seat. Let's get into this word of God on today. Yeah, real choices, real consequences, and we see real love. My grand dude, you all, is nine years old. He's in the fourth grade, and unfortunately, he's been bullied at his school. Now, let me tell you a little bit uh, about that, because it's been happening uh, Starisha, throughout the school year, there's been at least three instances where some children have decided to bully my little grand dude, DJ. And, and it's not his personality. If you know anything about DJ, it's not his personality to fight. That's just not his personality at all, uh, Pauline. Uh, he, I ain't going to say he's a lover, not a fighter. He ain't no lover either. He just ain't no fighter. <laughs> That's all. He just ain't no fighter. He's one of those go-along-to-get-along kids because that's how he is. Yet earlier in the school year, and the school only goes up to fourth grade, so he's at the highest grade that there is in the school, uh, Tamaya, and he'd be going to middle school next year, Tamaya, and yet early in the school year, one of the kids in his class hit him in the face. And the teacher told DJ and the kid to apologize, and DJ said, well, why should I apologize? I didn't hit them. They hit me. That's just his personality. But then what happened after that, uh, uh, TJ, is another kid, a boy who's bigger than DJ, uh, he actually said some things about him and tried to intimidate him and bully him. His parents, his dad in particular, called the school, talked to the principal. The principal talked to this boy's parents and allegedly it had been worked out. But then just a few weeks ago, Pat Hall, that same boy got three other boys and they followed DJ out of the school, walking across the school lot, and they called him out of his name, took his art assignment out of his bag and tore it up into pieces. Now, I mentioned you all, that's not his personality, Marcherie, to fight. As a matter of fact, let me give you some examples of just DJ's personality. I commented, he was over to our house once, which now is rare because he hangs out with his dad a whole lot, you know, but he used to hang out with us, now he hangs out with his dad a whole lot, and we ain't mad, we fine with that, but he was hanging out with us uh, one particular day, and, and I commented that his grandmother had left the door of the vehicle unlocked all night. And guess what he did, Tony? As soon as I said that, DJ said, but Papa, thank God nothing happened. 
I said, you know what, you're right. Let's thank God right now. And I literally started praying right then, thanking the Lord. Nothing happened. Our friends over there, amen, with us, baby, with sister living. When he was out for Christmas break, he came with us, helped serve them. We asked us about a month ago, when can he go back over to Maywood and Sister Living to help us love on the people over there? Because that Jamar is DJ's personality. Well, one of the things he did, though, Autumn, is DJ told his father that one of those boys, remember what the one boy had bullied him before Jeanette got three other boys. Well, one of those three other boys, he said, that boy was my friend. And he couldn't understand, Pauline, how his friend would join with this bully and begin to bully him. Matter of fact, I asked him, I said, do you say something to the teacher? He said, but Papa, we weren't in school. We were in the parking lot. And so he didn't think they could even do anything about it. And he couldn't understand so he said, why his friend would help somebody bully him. Well, one of the things we have to do, you all with DJ, is we have to help him find the balance between being cautious with the kids who are mean while still loving everyone because his personality is to love everyone. Now, let me bring that Kimberly over to our message today because what an image of how the Lord loves us. Bless your name, Jesus. See, just like DJ innocently gives everyone a chance even after they hurt him, he gives them a chance just like that. And here, Bonner, is the big idea for the day, you all. Here's what we're going to focus on today. The Lord loves everyone the same. Bless your name. I wish somebody heard what I just told you. Just like DJ gives everybody a chance, Marjorie. And if we're honest in this place and in your place today, all of us have done something to hurt the Lord. I don't mean physical him. I mean go against his will, his word, and his way. Yet, what does he do? Like DJ get him a chance? He says, but daddy, that's my friend. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he gives all of us a chance. Now, I know some may be asking today, Wendy, is that kind of love real? I mean, can, some, can somebody really love like y'all say Jesus? Like you say Jesus loves us? Others may be asking, why would the Lord love evil people? I mean, after all, Jamar, they're evil. We don't want evil people with us. Why would he love evil people? Some may be asking, though, today, Ruth Price, does he really love somebody like me? Because after stuff, I know what I've done. Do you really want me to believe that the Lord loves somebody like me? And then, sir, others Desmond, may be asking, and I hope you're asking this question, how can we share the love of the Lord with other people? Well, I'm glad you asked those questions. We're going to find out today, you all, and answer all those questions as we look at two benefits of the love of God. When the first benefit, love of God, the first point we see you on our text is that God love allows humanity to have what? Free will. Thank you. Free will. Put the verse up. Luke chapter 15, verse number 12. Look what it says, you all. It says, the younger son said to his father, give me my share of the property. And here they come up. Now watch this, you all. The father did what? divided the property between Gene, his two sons. Now, the Bible tells us right here, Gene, that the younger of two sons asked his father for the inheritance that he would have received in Alicia at either the father's retirement or the father's death. Don't miss this. Don't let this go over your head. I'm going to give it to you again before we move on. This is important. What he does, you all, is he asked the father, Pat Hall, give me my share of the inheritance that I would get in when you die or when you retire. Understand that under Jewish law, which they were Jews, Jesus talking to and about, a father was not free to write a will and divide his property as he desired. He couldn't say to my son, I give this to this person. I give that. No, there were certain specific things, Nalisha, that God commanded them to do as it relates to the inheritance when it came to their children, particularly their sons. Their elder son, according to God, would get a double portion of the inheritance and the rest of the inheritance was divided among the other sons. Put up Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 17, so we can see this, please. Look what God says through Moses. He says, he talking about the father must agree to give the older son two shares of everything he owns. Now, this is some specific, but the principle, Felicia, is the same. So even though, watch this, the older son is from the wife that the father doesn't love. 
that's not the issue. The issue ain't how you feel about their mama determine what you, what you give to that son. He says, no, you still give the son that belongs to the son. Why? Because that son was the first, the oldest son, who proved you could have children. So he has the right that belong to the older son. Because all oldest sons got two shares of everything. And the other sons, Felicia, had to get equally. The rest was divided among them. So in this instance, in Luke 15, the oldest son got two thirds and the younger son got one third because the father could not to Maya just give one son an inheritance without giving to both. Yeah, that, that's why I said he divided among both sons. Ain't this interesting? You all look, look at this, Stephen Jr. The youngest son says, give me mine. But because he has by law to divide to the older also, he has to give the older son something also. Oh, my God. Don't miss it. Don't miss this. This request included a certain callousness then, you all, because the son was in essence telling his daddy, give me the part of your estate I will get when you are dead so I can move on with my life. Wow. Wow, yeah, that's what he says here, Nalisha. He says, give me the part I'm supposed to get so I can go on with my life. Because as far as I'm concerned, you are worthless because you either retired or you're dead before you give it out. And as far as I'm concerned, you have no more purpose. So give me mine because I'm ready to go on and do what I want to do with my life. Mm, mm, mm. The father then, Marshall granted this request. Watch this. Because he knew that even though the son was not ready for this money, some lessons are best learned the hard way. I wish somebody hear what I'm saying this morning, you all. Yeah, he says some lessons, Gene, are best learned the hard way. Oh, my gosh. And it didn't take long for the son to learn the hard way. Look at verse 13 of Luke chapter 15. Let's look at this lesson that this son learned, you all. And so when you can see it, it says Luke 15 and 13. Then the younger son, verse 12, he says, give it. The daddy gives it to him. The younger son gathered up all that was his and traveled far away to another country. And he wasn't there long. Look what happened. He wasted his money in what? In foolish living. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This younger son, you all, represented the publicans and sinners that Jesus allowed to come to him despite the objections of the Pharisees. Let me take you back to Luke chapter 15, verse 1 and 2, so you can see this. Put up that so Marcherie can see, so we can understand how we got to where we are and how this younger son represents the Pharisees and, and the, I mean, the, the tax collectors and the sinners. It says the tax collectors and sinners all came to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and teachers of the law began to complain, and they said, Baal, look, this man welcomes sinners and even eats with them. What Jesus does here, you all, is he addresses the Pharisees by telling the parable, first of all, the lost sheep. That was two weeks ago, where a shepherd had 100 sheep. One got lost. He left the 99, and when he found that one, put it on his shoulders and brought it back to the community. And then the parable of the lost coin. We said that last week. A poor woman had 10 coins. That coin represented all the money they had for that day, and she searched her house diligently, feverishly, like Wendy said, until she found that coin. And, and the respective owners you own relentlessly searched until they found and returned what was lost. Now, while many people have mistakenly called this the parable of the prodigal son, and that's the common name people have for this, but actually Jesus is telling a story about a loving father. Bless your name, Jesus. As much as we say the prodigal son, it really ain't about the son, it's about the father. See, the father represents our triune God, just like the shepherd went to find the sheep, just like the woman went to find the coin. This father represents God who's looking for his son. Oh, man. The father, watch this now, allows us to make decisions even if they're not correct and he knows those decisions are going to hurt us. He still lets us make these decisions, TJ. See, sometimes, watch this, the Lord will let us learn the hard way by letting us make decisions that lead us to fall on our stubborn faces. I wish I had somebody who was real today and, and, and yeah, and admitted the fact that, yeah, sometimes you fell on your stubborn face and the Lord let you fall on your stubborn face. But here's the thing. Don't miss my to tell you. 
what we have to do, Lena, I'm gonna tell you, Lena, I'm gonna tell you this because somebody ain't gonna like me too much in that when I say this, but I'm gonna say it anyhow. We must allow some people to fall on their face. Yeah, yeah, somebody wanted to turn they 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 keep you off right there. Bottom line says that not my child, yeah, your child. We must let somebody fall on their face. You know what? Some people keep making the same bad decisions because they've never been allowed to fall hard enough to trust God and biblical community to help them make better decisions. Why they keep making the same bad decisions? Because you ain't let them fall hard enough to trust God. Because before they can reach out to God, you catch them. Before they can trust biblical community, you pick them back up. Before they say, God, only God can provide, you provide for them. And so they keep making the same decision. You say, well, if I help them, maybe they'll stop. But they ain't stopped in the last 10 years. They ain't going to stop tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. See, everything God created is good. And we cannot blame the Lord for our bad decisions or the bad decisions of other people. Put up 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 4, so you can see that everything he made, that's what it says, is good, and nothing should refuse if it is accepted with thanks. Now, this is important. Because everything he created is good, evil then must involve lack or misdirection of creative being, and evil is not, Kimberly, a substance that rivals God, nor can it detract from the world's goodness. You hear what I just said? Because everything he made is good, yet evil is real. How do you account for evil? Well, Nalisha, here it is. Because he only made good, evil is not a subject of rival God. In other words, evil has no power. And evil can't take away from what God made to be good. Because God is the sole creator, Pat Hall, Evil is real, yet evil, Adams, cannot reproduce evil. That is, evil can't make evil. Only God creates, evil can't create. So why is there evil? I'm going to tell you right now, because people elect to be evil. That's why evil exists, because people elect to be evil. While God already knows, Adams, everything is going to happen, God elects not to determine human free will or our actions. He says, I know what you're going to do, but I ain't going to make you do what I want you to do. Okay, put up sub point A. I, I'm trying to show you. So here's sub point A. We talk about everybody in free will, but here's what free will does. Free will can lead to what? Free will can lead to problems. Okay, put the verse up. Let, let's look how free will come with problems. Verse 14, look what it says, Luke 15 and 14. After he has spent everything, the son, a time, and maybe you had foolish living, a time came when there was no food anywhere in the country, and the son was poor. What's that next word? And hungry. He wasn't just poor, Alicia. He wasn't just hungry. He was poor and hungry. He used free will, Gene, and got poor and hungry. Okay, the irresponsible decisions of this son affected every area of this son's life. Oh, my gosh. It wasn't just that one area. He was poor and marshy and hungry. See, we must decide, Rasan, to live a life of worship where Jesus is Lord in every area of our lives. And because we don't always make the best decisions, we must you all submit to him and his plan for our lives. We are wrong then to blame the Lord or Satan for our unwise decisions. I told Howard last night, Flip Wilson messed a whole lot of people up, Pauline, talking about the devil made me do it. Satan can't make you do anything. I almost said the devil can't make you do anything. So stop blaming Satan and please stop blaming the Lord for unwise decisions or the unwise decisions of the people. Our triune God, Felicia, intentionally withdraws oversight of our free will, giving us the space and access to his grace to operate. So because he gives us space and grace, Jamar, he limits his sovereign determination of human choices so we can choose for ourselves. He says, I want you to make a choice for yourself. I'm not going to make you do the right thing. You, got, you ain't righteous if I got to make you do the right thing. Oh, my gosh. So the questions of sin and evil, Kimberly, are associated with called a theodicy. Put, put, that, put that up there so we can see it's the biggest word we use today. You always theodicy. Theodicy, here it is, and we all have done this whether we know it or not, but theodicy, Autumn, is the human attempt 
to defend God's existence and to justify his goodness and power in response to the problem of evil. So when people say, well, if God is real and powerful, why this happen? And then we start trying to explain and why God let some things happen. That's called a theodicy. Watch this. Now, we should avoid theodicies altogether if we can. But the safest theodicy is called free will theodicy. Put that next one up, Mr. So you can see this. This is the safest that we can have. It's called free will theodicy. Free will theodicy says God permits evil, uh, permits that is for human free will for the sake of the greater good of love. Again, free will theodicy, Kimberly says, God allows our free will for the sake of the greater good of love. You see, because Ruth Price, God loves us, he limits his control of our reactions so we can have the opportunity to choose for ourselves what we're going to do. That's why we know he loves us. What does that mean? Well, love is why God placed a tree of knowledge of good and evil in the Garden of Eden in the first place. See, somebody may be asking Marcherie if he knew they was going to eat from it. But me still don't know. Let me give you the history. In Genesis chapter 2, Gene, God tells Adam, after he creates everything, he says, look, you can eat from every fruit in this tree, a, a tree in the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The day you eat it, you're going to die. He tells them that. Genesis chapter 3, the serpent uh, comes, uh, 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 is used by Satan, tempts Eve, the wife, and she gives to Adam. They eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And guess what? Death comes. And somebody would say, well, he has all power. Why we let that happen? Well, I'm telling you why, why he put the tree there in the first place. And I'm telling you why he put the tree there in the first place, you all. He put the tree there because of love. Oh, my gosh. So you see, true love requires what's called liberation freedom or the freedom to do otherwise. It ain't real love if I got to force you to love me. Let me just play and, 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 and just play it off when I say this. If this is you, just, just play it off because that, it's serious. That's helping. I'm, I'm so sure when I say this. Watch this, you all. Uh, love without freedom is called abuse. I'm going to wipe my mouth. I'm going to say love without freedom is called abuse. In other words, if he got to go oops upside your head and make you say you love, he love, you love him, that ain't love. No, if, if, if he got to stay over you and attack you or, or she got to attack you, tell me you love me. You going to tell me you love me. You better tell me you love me. I love you. I know you love me. That ain't love. That's abuse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, though, you all, is why the father, Luke 15, gave his son an inheritance that this boy was not mature enough to maintain. Even though the father knew he wasn't mature enough uh, to maintain it, and the father wasn't ready to die or retire yet, Felicia. Love is why Jesus gives us the freedom to walk away from him, even though he knows we can't make it without him. Love is why he does this, because Jesus says, I love you so much that I would rather you freely submit in obedient love than honor me with your actions and you still sin in your hearts. Real love says... I hope you be with me, but if you don't, I hope you find the peace you're looking for, because real love said, I'd rather you find the peace you're looking for than to force you to be with me. All right, put, put up Matthew chapter 15, verse number seven. Look what Jesus told the Pharisees about love. Here what he says, you're hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he said about you, these people honor me with their words, but their hearts are far from me. My gosh, what God knows you all, he knows, Pat, that evil is going to happen. And he was sovereignly, Vivian, uh, determined to overcome evil by the death of Jesus Christ. He said, I know you're going to make wrong decisions. That's why I'm going to die, because my death overcomes all evil. The Lord knows what he's doing, even when it doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing. We must then respect people's free will to do the wrong thing. I don't want you to do wrong, but I respect your right to do the wrong thing. Now, this does not mean, Alicia, we want people to do wrong or we encourage them to do wrong. It means that we dis we don't despise or attack them because they do the wrong thing, Pauline. And sometimes it requires us to remove our support as they do the wrong thing. I don't want you to be wrong. I hope you don't do wrong, but I'm not going to help you do wrong. Because real love says, I'm going to give you a choice, but I'm not going to help you fall on your face. I'm going to let you fall on your face. Why? So you can trust God like you need to trust God. That's the only way 
people will know they can be vulnerable in the local community if they never have a chance to fall and then trust the community. How to know they can be vulnerable and trust the community? Okay, put up sub point B. Sub point B. Uh, here it is, right there, you all. Our sin has what? Our sin has consequence. Okay, show them verse 16. We, we, yeah, yeah. Free will, free will, you know, needs to promise. But here's the consequences. The son was so hungry. He wasn't just hungry, he was so hungry. He wanted to eat the pods the pigs were eating, but no one gave him what? No one gave that's the consequence of that, Jeanette. No one gave him anything. See, not only did this son separate himself from his father, but he led himself to a place of sin and shame. He left the father. That's why it's about the loving father, not about the son. This boy left the father and wound up a place in sin and shame. See, and walk away from the father, the son walked into more wrong decisions. Okay, put it the next slide up. Let, let, let me show you how the fall of humanity works, you all. This is the fall of humanity. It never changed since the Lord said this through John. Back in 1 John, there's three things. First, you all, how fall happens is the lust of the flesh. That's found in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16b. Satan tempted Jesus in Matthew 4 and 3 with the lust of the flesh. Jesus had fasted Jamar 40 days and nights. He was hungry. Satan said, if you are the son of God, turn these stones into bread, the lust of the flesh. Satan tempted humanity in Genesis 3 and 6 with the lust of the flesh. Eat from this fruit of this tree and because God knows you'd be just like him. Eat from the fruit of this tree. And then the son in Luke 15 to 13 be gave in to the temptation of the lust of the flesh. Or you can put the next one up. You all, what it does is not just lust of the flesh, but also the next one, you all, is the lust of the eyes. 1 John Marjorie 2.16, talk about the lust of the eyes. Things we see, we saw lust and desire. Satan tempted Jesus in Matthew 4. He took him up, Nalisha, on a high pinnacle, and he said, on the mountain, and he showed him all the nations in the instant and said, all these people that you're about to die for are worshiping me. If you bow down to me, I'll get it to you. The lust of the eyes. Satan tempted humanity. The lust of the eye, Genesis 6 and 3. Don't this tree look good, Starisha? Don't you want to eat from the tree, Starisha? Lust of the eyes. But the son gave in to the lust of the eyes, Luke 15 and 13, trying to get something uh, and, and wasting a foolish living. But put the last one up there, the fall of humanity, the pride of life. 1 John 2, 16, D, Satan tempted Jesus. That's when he took him up to the top of the temple, he said, if you really are the son of God, jump down and let an angel catch you so the people can see you are the son of God because the word says he will catch you lest you dash your foot against a stone. He tempted humanity with the pride of life. God knows when you eat this fruit, you could be just like him, the pride of life. And the son gave in to the temptation of the pride of life. You see, you all, we sin. Every time we submit to our selfish lust, which only leads us to more sin and uncontrollable consequences. Every time we give in to the lust of the flesh, the eyes of the pride of life, all we're going to get out of that are more consequences. Okay, let, 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 let me show you Luke 15 and 15. Look at the consequences. Look what the son did. He got a job, Felicia with one of the citizens in this far country who sent the son into the fields to feed the what? To feed the pigs. Now, this is important because the son, Ruth Price, left a righteous home and a righteous relationship. But because we're not meant to be alone, we're meant to be in community, he entered into community with someone who was not in his people group. And because we have to have community, Marsha Reed, and because he went into community, the people group he was in led him into sin. Okay, y'all don't believe me. What this meant, you all, was that the other group's culture became the son's norm. God told Moses uh, to tell his people to not eat pigs. Luke, Leviticus 11 and 7. Look what it said, Leviticus 11 and 7. This is what God says in the law. Now the pig has a split hoof that's completely divided. It does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. Not only, you all, did God say don't eat the pigs because they eat slop and live in mud, which would lead his people to be filthy and hang out in places they didn't belong, but the Gentiles worship pigs and use them in divination and offer them as a sacrifice to their idol gods. 
Now the Lord, don't 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 y'all cancel y'all subscription to the to the pork place right now. Here I'm about to tell you, because the Lord would later start just say through Peter and Paul that whatever He says is clean is clean. And if we pray over our food, we can eat whatever we eat because we pray over it. The issue in Luke 15 is that this son wasn't praying and God didn't say those pigs were clean. <laughs> Later on, he did tell us why we could do this. But right here, this wasn't the case. That's why this boy was out of order. And that's why this boy was living in, in sin. The mistake then, you all, is to think, because too many live with a secular, sacred devout like this son. And the mistake is to think, because we can say the name of God, we listen when the inspirational music and we read a Bible verse that we're not wrong to hang out in ungodly places and participate with ungodly people who are doing ungodly things. We think, well, well I, I, I pray. I, what difference does it make if I'm out here shaking my rump shaker? What, what difference does it make if I'm here doing it? No, it makes a difference because we got to represent Jesus. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. Don't play with me just because you grown and can get sloppy drunk. Don't mean you represent Jesus being grown and sloppy drunk. I wish somebody was real with me this morning because we need to stop pretending because we can say near the cross that we can also be 100 proof. Okay, okay, y'all get that later. But this, thank you, Jeanette got it. Jeanette got it. This is perpetuated, though, you all, in our Western culture that, watch this now, that celebrates the body as they value the sacredness of human life and personal identity while at the same time secularly exercising their rights to change the body even drastically. So we do we do today what this boy did, Pauline. He, he, he had a sacred, sacred divide. He grew up in a home worshiping God, but wound up in a place worship that worship idol gods. How many people do it with their own body? We talk about God made me and my body is the temple and I'm good. Yet we then change the body he made as if he made a mistake with his body. So what some do, I ain't tripping to nobody. If it's you, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just saying what we do. So some do this through BBLs. Some get their lifts and tucks and implants. Some do drugs. Some do whatever else. Because all the things we do to change the body he made. We say we appreciate the body. Then we change the body he made. Oh, my God. Like the sun, though, Bonner, many people today suffer because of the consequences of our sin. The world and its inhabitants, though, Felicia, are not suffering because God wants it to suffer. He caused it. The world and its inhabitants, Felicia, are suffering because of the privation of peace or the emptiness of peace, Wendy, or the shalom based on our own decisions. That is why the lunch and pair worldwide exists. We exist to help you have authentic relationships. So you are equipped to bring the peace of God to the place you live, work, learn, and play. Take it back to your context. We do this as the triune God sends us to share the love of the Father who sent Jesus to die to provide access to him and his shalom. And I'm going to tell you right now, you do not have to live as somebody who ain't following Jesus today. You do not have to live in the in filth of sin and call it clean. You ain't got to live in darkness and call it light. You ain't got to do that. But this doesn't mean you won't have any challenges, but it does mean that you have a biblical community who can love and walk with you in the midst of the challenge and the filth of sin. You are not by yourself. All right, put up sub point two as we look at the love, you all. Yeah, 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 yeah. The good news of God's love offers what? Yeah, to humanity. Put up verse 17, Luke 15 and 17. Look, look what it says right there, you all. When this son realized what he was doing, Ruth, he thought all of my father's servants have what? Plenty of food. But I'm here almost dying with hunger. Hunger. I'm going to leave and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against God and I've sinned against you. The youngest son here saw uh, Kimberly that he was living with another people group, feeding pigs, Adams, and consider eating the food the people group gave to feed the pigs. <laughs> this son is conditioned on metaphors for humanity and our sin. Let me show you what sin does. Put that up so people can see what sin does to us, you all. What sin does is sin separates us from God. Romans 3, 23, everyone has sinned, Alicia, and fallen short of God's glorious standard. 
humanity left God, God never left us. So I need us to get this thing to Maya. Yeah, sin separates us, but not because God leaves us when we sin. No, sin makes us leave God. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what happens, you all. Yeah, yeah. What happens when we separate from God, we find ourselves dying a slow, painful, merciless death. We will be dying, Felicia, from the lack of his peace that everyone needs. Lack of biblical community to help us be accountable and to be mature. Lack of the love or agape that created us, sustains us, and allows us to live without suspicion that everyone and everything is against us. When you don't have his love, you don't trust nobody else. I'm trying to show you what, what sin does by our decision. Put the next one up, what, what sin does, what, what sin does. Sin leads us to misuse our time, talent, and treasure. Ecclesiastes 9, 18. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner can destroy much good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, watch this. Our time, our talent, and treasures, Marshall, are gifts from God. They're not commodities we earn. They're gifts he gives. Oh, my gosh. Sin, though, will make us think we have more time, more talent, and more treasure bell than we actually receive from God. We'll think I, I can do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it, because that's what sin does. And this will lead us to misuse the time, talent, and treasure that God has given as if we have an endless supply of time, talent, and treasure, and we don't. We will ultimately, though, Joanna, only want to please ourselves and not the triune God, which will lead us to despise any and everyone and everything that does either please us or help us please ourselves. So if you don't help me please me, I get mad at you. It, 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 uh, that's what happens when, when you don't understand this. Yeah, don't misuse your time, time, treasure. When people ain't giving to you and do what you want them to do, you get mad at them. They wasted my time, man, wasted my time. Yeah, you get mad and then put the next one up, put the next one up. Look what sin will do you all. Sin will leave us empty and unfulfilled. Psalm 51 and three, I know about my wrongs. I cannot forget my sin. You are the only one I've sinned against. I have done what you, Father, have said is wrong. Just as the son shamed the father by prematurely asking for an inheritance and then walking away from the family, Everything we do wrong is actually against God. The son sinned against the father. We sinned against the father. Like the father, Luke 15, the Ruth, God does not hold us back. He allows us to make unwise decisions that can help us see his love in ways we took for granted before we fell. See, the fact he won't walk away meant this boy was taking his father's love for granted, Tharisha. He said, I got to let you walk away. Why? So you can appreciate my love even better. That's why it's about the father, not the son. Because he said, I'll let you walk away. But when you walk away and fall on your face, you realize I need the Lord right now. Like this father, you all, he doesn't hold us back. This is the love we share and show to other people. Then Jeanette, it does not condemn. It does not judge or tell people to be perfect before they can receive his love. Notice you all that at his lowest, this son remembered that even his father's servants had plenty of clean legal food to eat. And so he determined it was better to be a servant for his father than a sinner serving the enemy of God. He's I'd rather serve my daddy than be a sinner serving somebody who love the God I serve. Oh my gosh. That's when he decided to go home and tell his father. Look at verse number 19. Look what this son says. He tells himself, I'm going to go tell my daddy, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but let me be like one of your what? Yeah, to my one of your servants. David was inspired to write Psalm 84 and 10. Look what David says, you all, in Psalm 84 and 10. He says, one day in the courtyards of your temple is better than a thousand days anywhere else. Baal? I would rather be a doorkeeper in the temple of my God than live in the home of the wicked. Oh, my God. That word doorkeeper there, Tarisha, is a servant or a beggar who only wants to remain in the master's house. He says, I'd rather be a beggar in your house than, than live freely in the home of people who don't love you. I'd rather be a servant with you than live freely someplace where you don't want to be. Oh, my gosh. Woo, the best place we can be, you all, is with the Lord. The best place we can help other people be is with the Lord. To be clear, then, 
it was not Wendy that the son came to himself. As much as he recalled the love and grace his father had for everyone, including servants. That's why it's about the father. The son said, wait a minute. My daddy's servants are treated better than I'm treated over here, and I'm free. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I know I'm over 21, do what I want to do. But what good does it do, uh, Juju, to be over 21, do what you want to do, and you live it in bondage? Yeah, 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 yeah. While the son did not have to be perfect to return home, he did have to acknowledge he needed his father and be willing to repent for the wrong he had done. Luke 15 and 21, look what it says right there, you all. It says, the son said, Father, I have what? Against God and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. We can help people understand that while none of us need to be perfect to come to the Lord, all of us, Pat Hall, must recognize it is a privilege to be forgiven and received by him because of his love for us. Yet, the, yes, the son wanted to go back to the father. But here, don't miss this. Notice what the father was doing. He was already looking for the son to come back. Long before he came back, the father was looking, the loving father looking. Let me show you. Sub point A. Look at sub point A. Look what God's love does, you all. God's love leads him to always do what? Search for us. Put the verse up so everybody can see this verse, you all. Look what happens when he does. So the son left and went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father did what? He saw him. While he was a long way off, Sarisha, this daddy saw him and felt sorry for his son. So the father ran to him and hugged him and kissed him. Yes, the son had to repent. But it was the grace of the father that allowed the son a chance to repent. This is a picture then of the grace of God that we receive and the grace we're meant to give to other people. His grace helped us have. His grace helped us be. His grace helped us do what on our own we can never have, never be, and never do. All of humanity, Kimberly, was in sin, but God's grace floats us to have a chance to repent and be saved because of Jesus Christ, who is the only one who can give us salvation. Don't you understand, you all? It ain't that you chose God. He chose you. Y'all get that? That's why his, I wish somebody, where you see that, put his grace floats us, it floats us. That's what his grace floats us, Alicia. What does that mean? That means while in sin, Jamar, his grace keeps you up until you realize you need to be saved. See, we can't choose him. He chooses us. If you could choose him, it wouldn't be his grace. It'd be your will. We can't be saved by our will. So, yes, Bonner, the son said, I'll go back home. But long before the son said, I'll go back home, Bonner, the daddy was looking for him. Because that, that was his grace saying, I'm welcoming you back home. Because it didn't matter, Star, if that boy went back home. If the daddy wasn't looking for him, he could still win return. Daddy is looking for us to come back to him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, okay, 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 watch this, watch this, watch this. Jesus is the only one, you all, who can save us. All of us have sinned, which means we don't always make wise decisions. And sometimes we're going to be hurt by the people who exercise their free will to hurt us. That's why, Felicia, we only have faith in Jesus. This faith must be expressed in this life in response to hearing the gospel. We can't have faith after we die. We got to have faith right now while we are still in sin, Tamiya. Acts 4 and 12, look what God says through Luke and Acts 4 and 12. He says Jesus is the only one who can save people. No one else in the world is able to save us. The church in Acts, Pauline, gave up their entire lives. They dropped everything everything and they shared the gospel as if everything depended on them sharing the gospel and you know what you want we need to gene to do the same thing we need to give up our lives and share his love as if everything depends on us sharing his love we don't really should presume that we know what will happen because life is full of real choices these real choices have real consequences. But we do know, Joanna Bonner, that whatever happens, we can say it was good and just because we have faith that our God of love is just. I don't like what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be all right. Why? Because God has real love for us. And so what we do then, Felicia, we place every person we know into the hands of Jesus. 
regardless of what they've done, we put them in the hands of Jesus. And in the meantime, we keep making disciples. We make disciples, Wendy, without discrimination. We make disciples. And we should presuppose, Ruth Price, that if people don't hear the gospel, their eternal destiny is at stake because of the consequences of their choices. If they don't hear how much he loves them, Autumn, they will stand for an eternity separated from him, Autumn. And so we got to do this. We must share, Bell, the good news of the love and life of Jesus, Stephen Jr., to everyone who's in sin. Jesus, Jamar, is the one who was raised from the dead. And W-O-N, one of victory over death, sin, and the devil in his resurrection. To share the good news, you all, is to share a story about Jesus. And if Jesus, Gene, can defeat Satan, if he can defeat sin, if he can defeat death, surely Jesus can defeat the consequences of the bad decisions we've made. You know what I just said? If Jesus can defeat Satan, sin, and death, he can surely defeat the consequences of our decisions. This is the love that's waiting for everyone who comes to the Father to be welcomed to the salvation he provides. We'll put up sub point A right here so that they can see this. We would never comprehend the Father's what? We would never comprehend his love to Maya. Put the verse up so we, we can see this. Verse 24, Luke 15. My, he, this is what the Father says. My son was dead, but now he's alive again. He was lost, but now he is found. So they began to do what? They began to celebrate. The father is so excited, you all, that his son has returned, Desmond, that he celebrates. Even though this is the same son who considered him dead or worthless. Oh, my gosh. It does not make sense that the father will welcome the return of a son who had previously considered him dead. But this is how God is with us. And why we, you all, should avoid trying to justify his goodness in light of sin and evil. Because it ain't going to make sense. Jesus told this parable, though, you all, to help the Pharisees know that despite they're wanting to put God in some pious box that didn't allow the imperfect, irreligious people to come to God. God is essentially love. Even though you don't want him to love the people you don't love, you can't stop him because he only is love. First John chapter four, verse seven, he says to John, dear friends, we should love each other. Why? Because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has become God's child and knows God. Okay, go on. This is how God showed his love to us. He sent his one and only son into the world so that we could have life through him. Go on. This is what real love is. It's not our love for God. It's God's love for us. He sent his son to die in our place to take away our sins. Love, Bonner, is an eternal attribute of God. He is always love. He's only love, and he loves sinners. And when the love and holy God sees our sin, it provokes wrath. Not because he's changed from love to wrath, but because love takes the form of wrath when it sees sin. God is also holy, Ruth, and does not tolerate sin. So God's holiness is manifested in his love. And because he cannot tolerate sin, his love takes the form of mercy towards sinners. Oh, my gosh. So it condemns the sin, but it saves the sinners. This is why he takes us back when we come to him. Oh, my gosh. He's, I take you back because of my love. Why, Jesus, are you letting these sinners come to you? Because the Father loves them, <laughs> and I love them also. Why should I love people who hurt me? Because the Father loves them. And we, Marsh, we got to love them also. Watch this. I thought I'd tell you about my grand dude, DJ. DJ asked the question, Pauline, why would my friend bully me also? And we had to help him understand, you all, the, the tension between still loving him, but don't consider him to be your friend. DJ going to be fine, you all. Every week, DJ engages in the celebration of worship. He's nine years old, and he engaged more than some grown people engage. Okay, y'all y'all heard what I just said. Yep. And while his parents, Bonna, and the school still got to do their part to look after him while he's at school and look after him, period, 
DJ is going to help many people follow Jesus as long as he remains humble and loving. He's going to help people follow Jesus because, because of the love, because, because there's real, real, real choices. There are real consequences. But DJ is exhibiting real love. And that's what we must do, Nalisha. We must exhibit real love. The father proved over 2,000 years ago through Jesus that his love overcomes all evil. God, we love you. We thank you. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that 2,000 years ago, you told us about a loving father who represents God the Father and a, and a, and a son who was obstinate and, and ignorant and, 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 and asked, could he go fall on his face? And your love for him show that you let him fall on his face not because you didn't love him but because you wanted him to realize just how much he is loved by you that's why you let us sin you, you didn't make us sin you give us free will we elect to do evil then we elect to do wrong but you do that so that in the midst of it we can realize just how much you love us and just how much we really need you Thank you for that. Thank you not only for the lesson Jesus taught the Pharisees and us through this word, but the lesson a nine-year-old can teach us how we can love other people despite what happens and trust you in the process. I pray today, Jesus, that someone heard your word and they want to follow you with us. That someone, dear God, heard your word and they realize that no, they're not perfect, but we're not judging them in the imperfection. You allow, you didn't sin, you didn't make, you didn't cause, but you allow them to do the things that let them fall from you. But at the same time, your grace allows them to come back. Hallelujah. I pray that somebody, dear God, wants to return to you or come to you because they've heard about the love you have. I pray that someone, dear God, who works with us today wants to go make disciples and want to share the love you have. And that someone today, dear God, we have the courage and boldness to take their hands off of some people who keep trying to fall. And they let them fall. But then realize that you, you are that loving father who's always looking, saying they can always return to the love you provide. And when they do come back, thank you, it will be a righteous relationship because they've come back in sincerity of heart, repenting, wanting to be your child. Be with us and keep us and help us is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Put up, put up the challenge, please. The challenge this week. The challenge this week, you all, is great. I will statement, but what you gonna do uh, this week based on what God said to you today? What you gonna do this week? Not by and by when the morning come. What you gonna do this week? Real choices, real, uh, uh, real choices, real consequences, real love. What you gonna do this week? What has God said to you that you gonna do? And then who are you going to share this with to help you be accountable to keep your word? Put them up. Hopefully, um, this will be uh, working. We can see your comments. If not, my wife knows how to hold a conversation. And we can we definitely can hold a conversation. And we have some people here who can maybe even text her that I will state. So some can text. Oh she, oh, she can see. Okay, she can see them on here. So those who make them, she can see your I will statements. Okay, thank you, dear. Thank you. So they got that. Again, people do what they do. I do what I do. And um, you want to follow Jesus with us? The, the video is going to come and show you how to follow Jesus with us. And then we'll be back after an announcements and reminders with talk back and your I will statements. See you soon. We are so glad that you hung out with us today for our time of equipping at the launching pad worldwide. Now, after hearing what the Lord has said today, if you would like to learn more about Jesus, learn more about discipleship, learn more about the launching pad worldwide, or you just want to know how you can follow Christ with us as we help you have his peace in the places you live, work, learn, and play, 
All you have to do is text the word disciple to the number on the screen or take a picture of the code. We are waiting to connect with you. But most of all, Jesus is ready for you right now. Won't you walk with us today? Introducing the new Zulon Press book, Bloom Where God Has Planted You. It's time to fulfill your God-given purpose by Thomas Clark. Bloom where God has planted you. It is time to fulfill your God-given purpose. Is available at Christian bookstores and online. Purchase it today. It's announcement time. The Launching Pad Worldwide Takeoff Resurrection Sunday Worship Jesus is Lord Sunday, March 31st at 10 a.m. Come and get equipped to take God's peace to the places where you live, learn, work, and play. Free professional digital family photos. Refreshments will be served after worship. Youth Spring Break Photography Camp Enroll your child in the Launching Pad Worldwide Spring Break Photography Camp. Your child will learn the fundamentals of photography. They will take digital photos, edit and develop them into videos. We will conclude the week with a fun, exciting field trip. The dates are April the 1st through the 5th, 2024. Time is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday to Thursday and 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Friday. Where? Proviso Township. For ages 7 to 13. The cost is $30 per person, non-refundable. It includes your supplies, daily snacks, a field trip, and the lunch. Scan the code to register today or visit us at www.lunchingpadww.net. Space is limited. Do you know that we are blessed to bless others? Have you engaged in blessed practices lately? E. Begin with prayer. Pray for others. L. Listen with an attentive ear. E. E. Share a meal with someone. S. Serve others. S. Share your story with others. Someone needs to hear about God. If you would like to know more about the blessed practices, you can contact us on our Facebook membership page. Or you can contact us at www.worlddeliveranceCC.net. Thank you. The Launching Pad Worldwide Takeoff would like to thank you for engaging and posting comments last Sunday. We would also like to thank you for posting your I Will statements. God bless you. You are invited to join the Launching Pad Worldwide for prayer every Wednesday at 6 p.m via Zoom. If you would like to receive weekly prayer reminders along with the Zoom link, text the word PRAY to 708-584-1128. God bless you. If you ever experience technical difficulties during the live 10 a.m. Sunday celebration of worship, please rejoin us on one of the following platforms. T.A. Clark for Ministries YouTube, The Launching Pad Worldwide YouTube, The Launching Pad Worldwide Facebook, The Launching Pad www.net backslash live hyphen worship, The Launching Pad Worldwide. Help us help others. You can text your dollar amount to 844-713-4622. God bless you. 
Just a reminder, you can also find us on Facebook. And please, take a minute and share this worship experience on your various social media platforms. We would like to wish everyone born this month a very happy, happy birthday. God bless you. The Launching Pad Worldwide Takeoff presents the digital team. Introducing Kimberly K, Wendy J, and Felicia C. God bless you, digital team. Good morning. Do you know you can follow Christ with the Launching Pad Worldwide no matter where you live? Just text the word DISCIPLE to 708 584 1128 to find out additional information. God bless you. Hello, my name is Autumn. I'm a part of the production team. Thank you for engaging with us today. Hello, my name is Nikki Adams. I'm a part of the media production here at the Laundry Pad Worldwide, and I just want to say thank you for engaging with us. Hello, my name is Stephen Bonner. And I serve on the production team here at the Launching Pad Worldwide. Just wanted to thank you all for engaging with us on today. Hello, my name is Jamar and I'm at the Launching Pad Worldwide and I'm part of the media production team. And I just want to thank you for engaging with us. And I produce the celebration of worship. I just want to thank you for worshiping with us. Thank you for engaging with us and thank you for getting equipped with us. God bless you. And we're back and uh, trying to see if we see any of them. I think Marshall, we may have been on the uh, launching pad page, possibly. I don't know. Anyway, um, they were back and thank God for everything. What's up there? So what were you saying? If you place the I will statement in the comments and you don't see it in the comments, maybe, or we can't see it, maybe because you are on the launching pad um, page. Um, but on the... We can see. Oh, not the launcher. I can see that on 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 here. I only see the T. A. Clark. If you bring bring it that uh, you bring the comments up on 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 the monitor. Oh. Okay. Well, bring them up and see. And none on launch pad. One. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we yes, can see that. Yeah. yeah, we can see that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Just the laundry bag. I can't see, but the others I can't. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Yes. Thank you all. These are some awesome I will statements yes, coming in. Yes, and keep them, yes, keep them coming. Thank you so much for sharing your I will statements and then applying them and sharing them. Um, and be we're gonna go to our I will statements, but I just want to um quickly um just mention um, in the message you shared uh, about being in the wrong people group and that this son was in the wrong people group that um, I, that actually encouraged or led him into more sin and shame. And so that just really made me think about the importance of being active and engaged, not just be assigned to a missional community, but actually be active and engaged and on mission together. Because what do we do? We encourage each other. We can pray with each other. And we're not alone. God never intended for us to be on mission alone. He joined, he actually, he, he, he commands us to join him in the mission. And then we're together on mission together. So it's so important that we do be a part, you know, and active and engaged and on mission together with our mission or communities, help hold each other, the mutual accountability and obligation that we talk about all the time, helping hold each other accountable, but also for the missionaries that God has um, given us or trusted us to help lead the other missionaries in that group Take it seriously. Don't be the reason why someone ends up 
um, spending more time with the people group that God never intended them to be a part of. Because then they can lead to sin. When we take it just as seriously, then we do what we're supposed. We do what we're supposed to do. We do change the mission. You know the reasons of our life. We do plan the two by twos by twos in enough timing so that everyone can engage. So and be active in. So that's the mutual obligation, accountability on both parts. The person that God has trusted to lead that mission or community, as well as those that God has placed in it. We must be consistent and be serious about what God has told us to do. So true. And, and I've said it before, and it's a shock to some, but there's, there's no such thing as a brother or sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. That doesn't exist. Because we have the same daddy. We're just brothers and sisters, period. You don't put in, in Christ, because that 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 means I got some other brothers and someplace else. Because we got the same daddy, then we all are brothers and sisters. Now, that means we're in the same uh, uh, family community with him. Now, everybody ain't making disciples like we make disciples. And we don't begrudge that. We respect all forms of Jesus Christ. Even if we don't participate in everything anybody's doing, we respect it. We don't put that down. But now, because we understand it, particularly when we've been exposed to doing it the way he says do it, that we have to do is be in missional community with mm -hmm. each other, be active and engaged in the community so we can be the disciple makers that our daddy wants us to be. Because without that, we're disobedient to him. That's why I said earlier, I thank you what you do, but you ain't doing it for me. <laughs> You're doing it for him. So you, so when you get upset with me, then I ain't doing it. Okay, but you got to answer to daddy. You ain't answering to me. And I, I ain't going to get stressed out over that. But you're right. Because we're meant to be a community. We're meant, we're built for community. It is not good for man to be alone. That verse was not just about being married. That meant we need community. Hmm. And because we need community, people, people, the number of times being online or wherever else, when people talk about the community they've created, the artists and everything, we, we built a community here. You know, this is a community. Even people on drugs, this is the community we have. What, that's the community. Because people crave community, because we need community. And because of that, um, then if, if, if we don't provide biblical community, people are still going to have community. It's just the problem is they're going to get it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's what this son did. He, he found community, but he got community elsewhere. And it wasn't biblical. It wasn't well, holy. It wasn't the Bible, but it wasn't holy. It wasn't what God wanted. And I promise you, like he did, you'll wind up tempted to do some stuff because the community culture becomes your norm. That is, it's just what you do. It's just what you do. It's what, it's what we do. And that's the problem. Yes. But there, was, there were so many things that were said and um, notes that and I hope, you know, I'm sure that we took notes that we will um, – be able to refer back to, and then not, not just for ourselves, but to share with others, share with others. Um, so we're going to go to our first I will statement, and that is from uh, Rasan. And Rasan has been very engaging um, in the um, in um, the celebration of worship today. We thank God for that. And Rasan wrote, I will control my emotions and not let anger cloud my judgment. Um, that's his I will statement. All right, thank you, Rasan, for that, and thank you for your tr transparency and vulnerability with that. You know, one one of the things we talked about um, as God showed this this parable of the, of the loving father is that He had to let this son leave because that's the only way the son could be vulnerable to come back and, and and see what he needed. See, that son before he left, that son was arrogant and haughty. He he living in his daddy's house had access to everything his daddy had. Yet he didn't tell his daddy, as far as I'm concerned, you dead to me. That's what he told him. You dead to me. So give me my inheritance. And because of the law, he couldn't just take some and give it to that son. He had to also give some to the other son. And I imagine how it had to hurt this daddy <laughs> who's worked all these years to do whatever he's amassed, who wants to give it to his sons when it's time to have to, to, have to now go in and hurt his own and, and sacrifice his own wealth to give to both sons because one son said, as far as I'm concerned, you dead to me. Now he knew that this boy wasn't ready to go handle this. He knew he wasn't ready. 
And the boy clearly didn't trust his daddy enough to stay with him and say, I got what I need through you. So he said, I got to let you go because if I keep you here against your will, you ain't going to trust me anymore because I'll make you stay here. I'm going to let you, and I know you're going to fall. And it wasn't long before he wasted in foolish living, poor and hungry, and then wound up hanging out with pigs. <laughs> he just kept going down. And what we say in the word, I said, I would say that we say in the word is, is, is that um, him letting his son go allowed his son to, to, to want to be vulnerable and transparent to come back. And when he, he came back, he said, Daddy, I've sinned because mm -hmm. you went against God. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I'm not really called yourself. And that's when the father could give him his grace to say, yeah, but I love you. So thank you, Rasan, for, for being vulnerable and transparent enough to share. Share that. That means, Rasan, that you consider what we're doing here a safe space. And I hope people don't overlook that. Don't, don't uh, miss that. Yes. That yes. this Rasan considers it a safe space where he can share and be vulnerable. And, I, and, and that's so uh, appreciated. And, and that's the first step. Our mm -hmm. transparency in a community is the first step mm -hmm. because then that helps us hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. See, now we can pray with Rasan and encourage Rasan as he lives out this I will statement. We can also be praying and encouraging him in the midst of this. Mm -hmm. Our vulnerability is not meant to embarrass us. It's meant to help encourage us. There's strength in vulnerability. Amen. There's strength in transparency. We can never get to where we need to be, any of us, until we're vulnerable enough to say, We've seen it fall short of your glory. Because as long as I think butter came out of my mouth, I ain't going to think I need Jesus or Shalom. But the moment I can admit, no, 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 I got to be transparent and vulnerable and admit I've done wrong, then I can be in a position to receive the peace he has through salvation. Until we can admit I have some anger issues or whatever other issues, until they can admit that, we can't be what we need to be for him. So it's a powerful, I will statement, Rasan. Thank you so much for that. And we're praying. I'm, I'm going to say this now and then go to the next I will statement. I'm cheering for you. All, all the classes, a lot of classes I had when I was at, at the Mass in the week, and they would write uh, uh, comments, uh, and, and they would end it, or emails, they end it say, I'm cheering for you. Mm -hmm. And the reason they say that, y'all, is because I think it was, it was Bonner preached from Hebrews 12 recently. We have the great cloud of witnesses. Uh, and what they're doing, you all, they're cheering for us. Mm -hmm. Now, here's why it's important. Because Hebrews 11 talks about the hall of faith, the faith they had, the life they lived, right? So people who are cheering for us aren't just people on the sidelines. They never participated in the game. It ain't like us at, 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 at a football game here cheering. We ain't never been out on the field. It, 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 it's like having a hall of fame team on the sidelines saying, you can do it. You can make it. All the players who played before saying you can do it. It means a lot different when the people cheering for you have been out there before you doing it and they've accomplished it and you say, wow, they've done it. I can do it too. That's why Hebrews 11 feeds Hebrews chapter 12 and, and, and they're the great kind of witness who's cheering for us. Why? Because they've done it before. And they say you can do it also. Amen. As long as you look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so and I realize every writer, every teacher that is, they end, they say, and I'm cheering for you. Because mm -hmm. I've been there and done that. And I'm cheering for you. Well, Rasan, guess what, son? I'm cheering for you. Yes, we're cheering for Rasan. We're Rasan cheering has for, been yes. very engaged all. I'm doing an entire celebration of worship, you know, when yes. we joined in. And so, um, Mars, we are praying, as I put in the comments earlier during the um, message, Rasan, we're praying. Kimberly is going to have a conversation um, with Rasan. She's going to call him. And um, we're praying that Rasan will um, join a mission group. And community, the, yes, yes, the yes. mission uh, community. I'm sorry, and we'll be a part of that. We we'll, we can we can help encourage yes, him. Definitely, it definitely and will. You'll learn it about will. living a life of worship that's allowing Jesus um, to go from belief to di from disbelief to belief that Jesus is Lord in every area of our life, and when we allow him to be Lord over our you know our, our emotionals and our emotions and our attitude, then we can succeed exactly where Rasan says he's, he's going to do. And he's he even added here that he's going to um, operate in the grace of God. 
And so we look forward to that. And as we mature, the mature word, that's the buzzword. And I and I definitely can um, relate to Rasan. Uh, when he wrote that, I was there when I saw it, you know, about allowing God to be in control. You know, uh, he being in control, but ultimately God wants to be in control because we will fail every time without him. We will. And I related to him because when you start off talking about um, our little grand dude and um, being bullied, um, you know, I had to I had to allow Jesus, I think I'll put it in the comment, I had to allow him listen to him and then do what he says because I will get in a car and go to the school and look for the kids and we know that's not God. We know, but I've done it before. <laughs> so thank God for maturity. I mean, I did it with Darius and I'm like, oh, and that quickly came back to my mind. Oh, I need to go do what I did for Darius. Um, but no, they are handling it. And we, we are praying for his mom because this is, this is not funny, but it's true, you guys. We're praying for his mom and his dad because the dad wants to do a couple of things too. But mom did it. And um, you know, mom will let Jesus be Lord. But what Bishop didn't tell y'all is that mom did confront these little boys and they all apologized to DJ and him. And so I'm not gonna give you details, but you know, we we pray mom will allow Jesus to be Lord because it wasn't really nice. <laughs> and then called the kids' parents and told them she did it. Use the core apology. <laughs> so, so yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go on to our next I will statement, which is from Star Chappelle. <laughs> That's what he didn't tell you about. <laughs> yeah, but the issue is teaching DJ the tension between loving him and still, you know, being distant. And all yeah, that I know, but I thought about that with our son's statement, you know. Okay, we got in front of us. And too. we have, oh, we do. Okay, so Star says, I will continue to pray, ask God to help me not interfere when a lesson is needed to be learned and not try to save anyone who needs um, that lesson um, to be learned in that hard way. And she's going to share this with uh, Mama Red. Oh my gosh, like, yeah, these I will statements really, you know, they really resonate. And um, I can relate to them because, especially when that part, the closer that person is to you, you want to rescue them. Our children, you know, our family, friend, we want to step in and rescue them. And we can get, you know, step in and keep doing it to what you said that they are never fall on their face or look to God. We want that we, all of us, we need to rely in our faith. You said it earlier, be totally in him, but that is challenging. But with God's help, we can do that. We can't step back, move out the way and let him yeah, do what well, he's going to do. Well, yeah, part, part of maturity on our part is, is trusting. Watch this. Don't miss what I'm going to tell you all. Part of maturity on our part is trusting God enough that he knows how to take care of them. Yes. See, that's, I think. Because what we do is oftentimes people don't are allowed to fall or learn the lesson the hard way and let God help them because we don't want to see them suffer. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see them hurt. We don't want to see that. Not understanding that in our good intentions, we actually are hurting them more. So we have to allow them to go through what they go through and, and trust God. Trust God. It's a different kind of hurt situation, but our, our son Kyle, when he had to have, this was back in 2006, or 2006, something like that, 2005, 2006, when he had to have spine fusion surgery. Kyle had 21 hours of surgery. Mm -hmm. And and you talk about a hurting thing when when 21 hours is a long time. And, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you have to, you get, you, you walk, literally walk to the door when it, where the OR is at, you know, where the ORs are, operating rooms are at. And get to a certain door and the surgeon, anesthesiologist, and thank God the surgeon came because a lot of times they come see and they walk away and see how come. The anesthesiologist and the surgeon came to get them. Got to a certain door where they go through and the ORs are back there. And Nancy Johnson Turner said, you can't go any further than this. And, and you sit there saying, but God, as much as it, oh my gosh, I don't want to have to go through this. But this is what he needs. And it's the same, and it's, it's the principle, it's the same different situation, the same principle. I don't want them to hurt. But they need to go through what they need to go through. 
because they never go through it, they never trust you for your grace to be better. And so, Starisha, what you're saying it is the same because it's, it's tempting to interfere. It's tempting to say, well, if I keep telling them, if I keep helping them, they'll get it. And they haven't gotten it yet. And it's not an indictment against them. The human condition. Again, evil is not a substance to rival God, yet we elect to do certain things. I'm not saying what's going on with evil. I'm saying that whatever it is, is that privation of what he gives, absent what he gives, um, we give in to that. So we who follow Jesus have to step back and trust him. And like the anesthesiologists say, we go so far and the Lord says, you can't go no further with them. Mm -hmm. You got to stay right here and mm -hmm. trust that I that I'm still omnipresent. I'm still everywhere. And I know how to get them. Mm -hmm. If they're going to come to me, because <laughs> you can't save them. You can't save them. If they're going to come to me, then you got to trust that that, that, that that I love them. But then what you need to be doing is praying for them. And when they, and when they are converted, when they want to come back to me, you don't, I told you so. You should listen to, don't, don't do none of that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do none of that. <laughs> Just receive him in love. <laughs> receive him in love. And, and how do you know they're ready? Not, not because they look at you. Oh, they're ready. No. They got to have a contrite heart. <laughs> that boy was contrite. He was apologizing. So it ain't because, well, they, they look like they, they were crying. They were hurting. So I took, ah. They got to have a contrite heart. Could you rescue them too soon? All they're going to do is retool and do it all over again. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be willing to say, okay, Lord, I trust you. Mm -hmm. And be and long, and watch it, and long before I take them back, thank you, Jesus, you'll take them in. And let them, and, and once they walk, and once they want to walk with him, then, come on, I can walk with you to walk with him. Because mm -hmm. until they want to walk with him, all they're going to do is pull you away, and you're going to be pulled away again. Thank you, Starisha. All right. Amen. It is just so many, I'm telling you, awesome I will statements. But I think we're going to go on and go with the youth. We okay. We had cool. two adults. But it's really some awesome I will statements I would like to highlight. We're going to go with the youth. We're going to go with Tamaya. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do they have Tamaya? Mm -hmm. Tamaya I will statements. Oh, okay. They don't okay. have it. Okay. We so got we it. Will, here. Let me see we something. Have it here. Maya the realist. Okay. Maya says, um, I will remain humble and loving, even if the enemy is trying to make me act out of my character. And I will forgive and not hold grudges. And she's going to share this with Shalea. And it's a great I will statement. Thank you. And I'm glad that Tamaya. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Been, okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. glad that <laughs> Tamaya said when the enemy is trying to make me, because you know what? Instead of saying when the enemy makes me, because he can't make us do anything. So I just like that, you know, she she had like that there to say when he's trying to make me, because he has no power until we allow him, we give him some. Are you finished? I'm finished. I can talk now. You can talk. Okay. You got the mic. <laughs> Thank you. Here's the thing about it. We, we showed the, the fall of humanity is always the same. I show you three three examples in the Bible. The, the, the basis of it is first John chapter two, verse sixteen. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life. Satan has no new tricks. And it ain't because we keep falling for the same ones. He just has no new tricks, period. But we do keep falling for the same ones. So it ain't cause because it ain't like once you know we stop falling for them, he'll find another one. He just keeps coming back. So, so, so whether it's the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life, whatever it is, um, what to mind say, yeah, he would try to make you back out of character using one of those three areas because that's what led to the fall because he tried to get Jesus to fall with. That's what the son fell with. And if we're honest, if we look back at our lives, every time we fail, it was one of those three things, mm -hmm. lust of the flesh, mm -hmm. lust of the eye, or the pride of life. Mm -hmm. Probably like I'm this, I'm that, I'm you know, yeah. It, it's been one of those three things. Mm -hmm. So, so, so the idea of first of all, remaining humble and loving, humility, yeah, is voluntary. The Lord would not make us be humble if He has to humble us. Ultimately, mm -hmm. we become humiliated. <laughs> it ain't cute if He got to humble you. So good that you will stay humble, Tamaya. And loving, because he is love, 
stay close to him. So humble puts you under him. Loving brings you close to him. You know, see how that works? I, you submit to him and be close to him as you're under him. Whatever the Lord has, he's the one you're under in, in humility and, and willing to serve him. And we serve other people. We serve him with other people in love. And, and the enemy will try. He, he's going to try. He's going to try to, to do things. Um, remember this also. The enemy of God is an enemy to us. It ain't like he's God's enemy but your friend. Now that's important because there's some people we hang with who are God's mm -hmm. enemy and we think but they, they my friend. friend. Yeah. That's the thing we help DJ understand. Yes. If, if, if this boy want to partner with your enemy, he ain't really your friend. Now you still can love him. Don't love Satan. You can love him but he ain't really your friend. That's what, they, that's what I said. The tender has DJ understand. Because he can say, but, my, but he's my friend. My friend. Baby, he ain't your friend <laughs> if he got with the kid who keeps trying to bully you and bully you. He ain't your friend. So anybody who's an enemy to our father, guess what? They're not. They're not our friend. They're not our friend. They're not our friend. So, so, so when the enemy tries, and sometimes he tried to make you out of character by using and getting cozy. Again, same trick. What did he do with the with Eve in the garden? Use a serpent. <laughs> she thought it was her friend. That wasn't your friend, baby. That wasn't your friend. He was the enemy. He uses something familiar. But don't act out of character. And yes, don't hold grudges. Um, just keep loving people. You keep loving people. And, and, and here's the thing. Let God love people through us. That's the thing. Let God love people through through you, Tamaya. Uh, and it goes so far towards helping them see his love. If they're if they're ever going to be what he wants them to be, they gotta see his love. And who they going and who best for them to see it through? But then through the people they thought they could hurt me. Can't hurt me. But here's a secret, Tamaya. Cause I love you. I'm gonna tell you this. And everybody can eavesdrop. I'm gonna tell Tamaya. The word of God says. When you love the people mean to you, you heap in coals of fire on their head. In other words, it burns them up that they can't make you act out of character. They pick and prod and try. And when you stay in character, hmm. they lose their mind. Now, you ain't trying to make them lose their mind, but that's kind of the residual effect of it because you still stay close to Jesus. Love you, baby. <laughs> what you want to say? They eventually leave you alone too. <laughs> they go to the next person. Oh yeah, they do because they, they gonna keep picking when they say they can't I get you. They go the hard way. They just they just leave, they leave you alone. Yeah, they, they leave, leave you alone. alone. They leave you alone. And they, yeah, yeah. As long as you go back and forth with them, I ain't going back and forth. Anyway, you go back and forth with them. <laughs> <laughs> so don't start that. No, this is this is this has really been great though, and, and just like you know, you mentioned to Rasan, we are cheering everyone on. Yeah, we're you know, cheering we're for cheer all you all. Thank you. I will say on. we're cheering for all of you. Yes, yes. we are. We're and, and cheering also, you all. So pray, pray. You know, we have the um. I see Marcia is sitting here, and she's here every Sunday, and, and the um the um those that are helping to lead the prayer. You know, yes. um, Prayers, here, yes. yeah, with um the launching pad. They're, we're there on every Wednesday. We have, you know, we have prayer online. Join in. Yes, you Don't, can. Yes, you can. can join in. And then they have. We have the. You can submit your prayer requests. You know, on the on the website. Yes, they pray. Sure can. They're praying sure can. and pray. Look, every every week, every day. Usually, we are praying for your I will says. We're praying that we actually share. Them. We're praying yes. that we're actually yes. applying yes. them. Yes. So she, pray for pray that the I will statements that we do share them and that we do actually apply them pray that join in with that prayer and then submit you've seen you know, several several things have went into the comments where we can if you look and you are attentive and you um intentional about looking for that look for those things that we should be praying about even just right in our comments there's been things today that we can pray for each other about and um and then do what just do what god tells us to do yes yes and prayer is very important very important it's very important it's very important. It's very all right. important. All right. Thank you all. Um, the relaunch will be at 4 p.m. today. Howard said he's looking forward to He's going to be the one engaging this afternoon mm -hmm. at 4 p.m. Then stop other people. It will be on Facebook. So, you know, and on YouTube, too. But um, and so engage, invite other people. Just the sermon only relaunch.
excuse me, on my on my Facebook page, and we share it to other, we share it to the laundry pad page, other places, but on my page. And uh, so come on and engage in the sermon. Uh, we finish this series next Sunday. This Sunday finish next ne next series finish next Sunday. In two weeks is Resurrection Sunday. We start a new series, Resurrection Sunday. And I, you ain't got to guess. I'm going to tell you the series title. We start in two weeks. It's what we're talking about all focus this year. And then we got a series for it. Listen to Jesus and do what he says. That's the series we start in two weeks. Um, but we finish this one next week. So I'm excited about that. Um, love you all. And, and, and see you all folks in prayer. I'm excited what y'all going to be doing in Mission Communities this week. And I'm um, excited to hear how our will statements go. We see you. Give us our benediction, please, Jack. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. Thank you for being, um, God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Triumph, God. We thank you for your word, Father God. Thank you for your serving, God. Thank you, Lord, Father God, for allowing us to comprehend and understand your word and illuminate it um, to us, God, in a, a way that we maybe not even heard this story, this parable before. But we thank you, Father God, for being um, just a loving God and for extending your grace and your mercy and Lord, how we extend that grace to others. Father God, thank you for allowing us to be on mission uh, with you and to be on mission uh, with our friends as we take your peace and your love and um, to those places as we go, go, go. Take it to those places that lack it, God. We thank you, Lord, Father God, for every I will statement. Thank you, Lord, Father God, that we will change the rhythm of our life and prioritize, Lord, your mission, God, and Lord, we'll share, God, and um, Lord, even if it's not with the person that we have listed, God, that you're always um, providing opportunities for us to share, God, with others. So we thank you for that, God, and Lord, thank you for always pursuing us, God, and for always looking to bring us and connect us back to you so we thank you lord because you're the standard god and you've showed us what to do god that we're always on the lookout for those that lack your peace to connect them back to you father god as we allow them to be um to be part of our lives father god until they trust us enough to invite us back into theirs so we thank you and we praise you god for all these things in the name of jesus amen amen see you later